Daddy's Dungeon. Daddy's what? The fuck is Daddy's Dungeon? Daddy's Dungeon. <laughs> Daddy's fucking Dungeon. All of you! Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? <laughs> Are you ready? Ready? Uh, actually, no, let me get some water. Are you ready, Chris? I'm ready. How are you feeling? Good. Stoked. <laughs> you know what? Cool. I just called you, I think, I don't think I've ever called you Chris, other than, like, <laughs> the first time I just did before now. <laughs> really? Uh, oh, when, when I was back there, I, I asked you, Chris, could you go ahead and lean forward? Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Felt a little weird. <laughs> not going to lie. I always just call you Chris Noodles. Yeah. It, well, uh, Noodles has been my nickname for, like, since, like, middle school, so... It's not weird. <laughs> so it's a nickname? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was your last name. I thought it was your last name. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's because my last name is similar to ramen. So that's where the noodles came from. Oh, sick. That's awesome. So my uh, last name is R-A-M-O-N, and ramen is R-A-M-E-N. So like, what are you, like, Hispanic? Yeah, Hispanic, yeah. Fake, fake Hispanic. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know any Spanish. I don't know anything. So nothing. No, nope. brother. I've been hitting the Duolingo hard. <laughs> I'm number two right now in bronze league yeah. in, in the world. So I've been going. This one guy keeps like, he goes at like two in the morning, and just he destroys stacks. me. But then I get the whole day. So it's like <laughs> I got like two more days before the it resets. So I got to beat his ass. You really think that's in the world? <laughs> I don't, dude. I don't know. It's just getting the leaderboard, bro. You know, it's kind of like maybe it's like the Northwest America, like how they do in Call of Duty. You know, they have the regions. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. kind of like the Discord thing, right? With the whole crowns and everything on the last uh, FM. Yeah. Is that Are you actually on, on Discord? On IEH Discord? Yeah, yeah. I like never talking there. Oh, okay. But yeah, I'm in there. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Is that a real representation? Like, oh yeah, you're number one in the world, or you're this this in the world. I don't, I don't think <laughs> yeah. so either, right? I'd like to believe so. I'd like to believe so too. Because he's he's about to be number one globally for for King Nine. Oh really? According yeah, to that's, last, and that's why I don't believe it. Because <laughs> I feel like there's totally some Long Island heads. Yeah. That, yeah, well, they probably don't have Last FM. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. So right now he's number one in the world for King Nine listens. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Oh, no. <laughs> True, so got me. Still. Still. That's why he's still. Yeah, like in that little Discord, we're still trying to figure out who's who. Because oh, no, yeah. no one has the real name yeah, no or a real photo names. except yeah. for me. So <laughs> I don't even struggling. have my photo on there. And when I joined it, that was like half of the, like half of the, you know, trying to figure it out. I was like, dude, who is who in this Discord? <laughs> and since we're trying to figure out who's who in this Discord, we're gonna figure out who you are yeah, in this I'll, Discord. Yeah, I'm gonna scroll through and find <laughs> you. <laughs> well, mine, mine says noodles. It just doesn't have my picture. But I was going into a proper introduction. Oh. You were Chris Noodles. I am. <laughs> Personally, I think I call you the wizard. <laughs> the wizard. I feel like you're you're a wizard. You're Chris Noodles. You play bass for Ruin, OC, and gaming head, music head, <laughs> skating head, skating head. You've done it all. The oh, best. Yeah. The best head. <laughs> pause. 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 Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's funny. Dude, you posted like these videos of you skating. I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. Yeah, that was like, that was my life growing up. Like, that's all I did. How long yeah. ago were the, were those videos taken? Uh, most of them were probably like, I was like, dude, by this time, probably like ten years now. Like 18, 19, 20, probably around there. You still hitting it like that? No, not at all. <laughs> Dude, that caught me so not off guard. All. It caught me <laughs> so off guard when I saw those videos. Because I used to skate back in the day myself. I mean, not to that extent, really. Yeah. But I did love it. And when I saw that, I was like, Dude, no way. This guy shreds on the base and he shreds on the board, bro. What <laughs> the you. frick? It was sick. Yeah, dude, it was awesome. Like, like I said, it's all I did. Like, my hometown, it's kind of funny because like my hometown, the it's like super small. It's like a major city in Texas, but it's like one of the smaller ones. And the skate park was like, dude, it was like, I don't even know what's compared. It was tiny and it was like awful. So it was like uh, me and some of my friends that kind of came out of there was like, you know, kind of like the come from nothing kind of thing. Um, and then we eventually got a bigger skate park and that was nice, but I lived like kind of far from it. So I'd have to like take the bus just to go to that skate park and like wasn't really worth it. And that skate park didn't have lights. So like as soon as I start or like, especially when it would get dark at like six, 
dude, I was like, get out of school. And I'm like, I can't even make it to that skate park. So I'm like, always stuck at like the shitty skate park, you know? Um, and then, yeah, we, we got that park and that was awesome and helped a lot. And then from there, I moved to Austin, which is like one of the best places for skating, um, especially in Texas. And just moved there just for skating and just kind of like focused on that and like worked obviously on the side, but that was like the primary focus. And then I lived there for like eight years. So that was cool. Dude, but I heard that if you can, if you can shred a shitty skate park, you will absolutely <laughs> destroy a good Yeah, one. and I don't know if that's like what, it, you Is know. Is that the case for you? What'd you say? It, I don't know, it might have been. Cause like the people that I skated with that went there every day and like wanted to like get serious with skating, like they were all really fucking good too. Like it was crazy. Uh, so I don't know, maybe that is a thing. I don't, I don't know. But um, yeah, that's literally all I did. Like when I was 17, I did the whole like cross country in the van with my friends. That was awesome. Uh, my shout out my mom. <laughs> my mom, uh, my mom's crazy, man. She's like number one supporter, like by far. Uh, she gave me the apartment rent money <laughs> to go do that. and. She, by the time I got back, she, she had a new apartment. Oh. But she did that so I could go and like live my dream. Damn, yeah, dude. It's crazy. Yeah, she's awesome. Um, so, so yeah, I got to like experience the whole like, especially like I said, where we come from is like very small. There's like not much. So like, going out to California for the first time, like, uh, living the skate dream stuff. Right. And like now that I'm here, I'm like, dude, it's like seeing it all the time, seeing it spoiled, like. It's crazy, man. Like I wish I had that <laughs> growing up. So sure. spoiled. Yeah. So spoiled. When I when I first started visiting Evelyn, uh, when I came here, one of the first things I noticed was like, just you know, uh, obviously like if the windows open and stuff, you just hear skateboards going down the street, and I'm like, dude, that is, like something small like that is like the craziest thing to me because <laughs> of where I come from. Uh, like the school I went to, there was like two or three skateboarders, and like that was it. So. Uh, yeah, it's very foreign to me for sure. How many friends did you drive out with in the van? Uh, three others. So it was me, my friend Corey, uh, my friend Carlos, and my friend Joe. And we all, we were out for like, I think it was like three weeks or like a month or something. It was awesome. We went like all over. Uh, we got to see the um, Street League oh, when, it like, when it like first started. We like went to, it was right here in Ontario. The convention center, I think. That's when I think it was at, like, when it was first starting. And, like, yeah. that's when I think it was at its best, Dude, it in awesome. my opinion. It was very awesome. And, like, we got there really early. And we, like, kind of snuck in without realizing we snuck in. <clears throat> so, like, we were hanging out with them. Like, while they're all practicing and stuff. And then, like, everyone was super cool with us being there. And it was, like, it was, it was like, a really, really cool moment. Just to, like, be hanging out in there coming from like you know all the way from texas in the van and stuff uh it was sick and then um yeah we just hit so many skate parks we went to like the that was also when like the barracks outdoor plaza had just opened the west in westchester i think is where it is by lax uh so i got to skate that when i skated there uh nigel houston was there and louis lopez was there and louis lopez was like super stoked on my skating so i was like he was like one of my favorite skaters at the time, so I was like kind of freaking out about it. Both of them were super young at the time. Yeah, they were younger, yeah. It was really cool. Like, Nigel Houston like pulled up in like this crazy like monster themed like uh, like SUV thing. And he was just like giving out monsters, giving out shoes, like just hooking up everyone. It was cool. And I was like, damn, that's like, that's what it's about, you know, like giving back. And um, yeah, so that was, that was really awesome. And then, um, we also skated Stoner Plaza when that opened. That was like closer to when it opened as well. Dude, that place is unreal. <laughs> that place is awesome. Stoner Plaza, and then I saw Austin Gillette, which is like um, probably like one of my all-time favorite skaters. Uh, I saw him there, and I had his like Habitat board. So there's like a picture of me like holding up the board with him, and like, we were like taking a picture, and I have like the goofiest smile on my face. <laughs> it's like so funny. Just starstruck. Yeah, yeah. Like, you were geeking. Starstruck. Yeah. <laughs> and then we were like skating like the hub on stairs like together, and I was like, dude, this is awesome. But did so. you did you guys just do California, or did you guys do multiple stops? Um, mostly just California. Like the goal was like we got to get to Cali kind of thing. So that's like the 
like the mecca of skating yeah thing. yeah exactly um yeah because we went through like the other states and we just kind of like um we were just like all right well let's just keep driving and then we'd stop again like no let's just keep driving so yeah the goal was like okay let's get to california and then we do everything so how long do you think it took you to get here from texas it's so long (laughs) it's um that okay so especially now that i've done it multiple times i think that time it probably took like maybe 22 hours but that's because there was like people rotating in the driver's seat and stuff um and i was like i was the youngest one so i i was the only one that didn't drive um and then i have gone back and forth um probably like four or five times now and i've done it twice wait so once i guess technically four times because from texas to here and the cali to back by myself and when I did it by myself, it was like 30 something hours, 33 hours or something. Oh, you just like stop and take a break. Yeah, yeah, it's it's long. It's tough. And I wouldn't even like, I wouldn't get hotels or anything. I would just like sleep at like the truck stops or like the rest areas and just park like kind of like by a light or something. You know, something it was rough in that. Yeah, and then I'd just throw my chair back and just sleep for like maybe three hours or something. That's um, freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah, so I was just like, um, but I mean, it, it was, I mean, I live here now, so it was worth it. <laughs> So what's like the what's something you miss about Texas about living over there? Dude, I don't. There's a lot of differences for sure. Obviously, number one is like money. <laughs> it's so expensive out here, um, and everything's like super cheap in Texas, and it's awesome. Uh, and then like little things like. Um, is it true that everything's bigger in Texas? Yes, it is. And uh, this is a funny story. Another story with Evelyn. Uh, when the first time she visited me, we had like went out to eat somewhere, and she was like, um, she was like, "Why did you get me like an extra large drink?" And I was like, "This is like a medium." <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, um, it was at Waterburger actually. It was just like Waterburger. Okay, so you, Waterburger or In and Out. Everyone's gonna hate me, but for me, it's Waterburger. Hey, hey, hey! You're biased, <laughs> brother. You're, would you say you're biased? I don't think he is. He's been out here all long. He's been out here. I've been here like, yeah, yeah about two years now. But I like In and Out. I'm sure you've had your fair share of In and Out too, huh? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's it's great. Like I'll eat it every time. Uh, but I don't know. Something about Waterburger to me is. I mean, maybe it is just like. It warms your heart. Yeah, maybe it's something like that. And like I grew up with that. You know, like people grew up with In and Out, like that kind of thing. Like, I don't know. I've um, never had Waterburger, so it's like. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to like. What, what's like a go-to order? For me, it's the. I always get the patty melt, but no onions, and then I add bacon to it. Oh, that's probably so good. And so good. great. Was Waterburger your go-to place? Yeah, for sure. It was. Yeah, definitely. Like, by far the most fast food. Is there any like other fast food place that they have out there that they don't have here? Yeah. Okay. Well, specifically in Austin, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of places. There's one that's like P. Terry's, which is so awesome. And that's just, it's kind of like an In-N-Out. Just like homemade kind of burgers. Dude, so good. The fries are like freshly cut, like super salty, which I kind of like. Um, dude, they have like awesome milkshakes. They have like everything. It's basically like an In-N-Out. But that, one's, that one's super awesome. Um, there's a place called Torchies. And do you get, did you guys hear about this on Hardlore? Mm-hmm. Torchies? Yeah, they did like the fast food tier and they were like, what is Torchies? No, I didn't hear about that. Like, and they just like ignored it because they didn't know what it was. Torchies is like a... You're putting respect I, 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 on its name right now. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's awesome. It's like a... How do you explain it? It's like a craft taco place, I guess you could say. Like they, they do like... Like kind of stuff you wouldn't think of. Like a sausage kind of taco with like... Just like shit in there you just wouldn't expect and it's like super good yeah it's awesome i'm very intrigued it's yeah, like it sounds, it's, uh, sounds odd it's the accelerated cuisine it's like fast but it's not like fast food it's like it's, it's like awesome. a step above yeah it's awesome and i'm guessing it's a little pricier than your typical fast food chain right yeah it is but it's not like crazy either it's like it's reasonable for sure and uh Dude, I don't know. You, I'd have to like show you the menu, and you'd be like, "Dude, what is this?" <laughs> but that's still a spot where, like, if you're driving through Texas, you see a Torchies, you could easily drive through there and get your yeah. food as quickly yeah, as any yeah, other place. Sure. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. I honestly don't know if they have any like drive-through windows, but it's like, it's kind of like one of those you order and then like you can pick it up and then you're gone. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, um, I'm trying to think what else. I don't know. 
I think that's kind of like the two big ones, like at least for me, when, like what I would eat a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. What about like the, the people? What's the difference between the people? Big difference in people. To- like, like, I know, I know, like the Austin scene is like popping out there. Yeah, Austin is. Dude, I love Austin. If I ever went back to Texas, it would definitely be back to Austin. Um, but the people, it's like, it's honestly kind of like nine day difference from here and there. Like everyone there is like super welcoming and like, um, I don't know, they'll just like randomly talk to you or like whatever, like super friendly and everyone that I hear is like kind of like you know tunnel vision tunnel vision not you know fast paced doing their own thing that kind of stuff um which I mean which isn't necessarily a bad thing it's just kind of the nature of it out here but why is that I wonder Uh, why is that it's uh I think we're entitled (laughs) that was the the first thing I noticed when I when I came out here for the first time I was like dude no one's like like even like the small gestures of like holding the door like you know little things like that they don't do that like, well, I, de- I like I noticed it less. Uh-huh. Like people were just like, just know, keep going. Yeah, keep going, and you doing you know doing them or whatever. Because that was one of the first things I noticed that like Kentucky, they were super nice over there. Yeah, and I feel like like the Midwest like that like kind of has the same like hospitality kind of mentality. That's the only time so. I've ever been in the Midwest ever. And I had the same experience when I went to Oklahoma. Yeah, it was, it was the guess, same yeah. exact experience. Yeah. I was like, dude, what is going on? What is in the water over here in California or something, you know? Yeah. And I feel like New York, it's also a complete difference yeah, as well. I, I've never been, but I can imagine it's kind of like also a very fast place, place where it's like, you know, people don't. Is that how it is? or have it... I've never been to New York, but I, that's just how I would imagine it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. But now I'm thinking, what about like Florida? Since that's like a pretty <laughs> big city too, or as a state, right? Mm-hmm. But um, that's like a... Yeah, I, I feel like that's a real fast-paced place as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? You think? I, I, yeah. All I ever know is that, like, I like looking up dates and then searching Florida behind it, like, for the news and just seeing the stupid shit that happens <laughs> over there. There's oh. a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> they definitely have to like, rock her over there. Yeah. Some of, like, my friends that I game with are from Florida, and like, they'll just tell me the craziest stories. I'm like, dude, what's going on? Yeah, there's a radio show, and they'll go, Florida or not, and then someone will be on the phone... And they'll they'll see if it's Florida or not, and most of the time it is Florida. <laughs> like the whatever the dumbest headline is, it's so funny. Like the most bizarre thing uh, is like, <laughs> that's funny. I'd love to go to Florida. So speaking of gaming, you posted something. You said I missed this. It was like a 35k <laughs> tournament. So that's like some pro gamer stuff. Yeah, that was like another thing. Like if I wasn't skating, I was like grinding some sort of game, and it was mostly Halo, um, growing up. Uh, so yeah, I like competed in a lot of tournaments. Uh, played a lot of local ones, a lot of ones I traveled to, um, did a lot of online tournament stuff, um, and then that led to like other games, and it's always been like FPS in the FPS realm. Um, yeah, I don't know. And then How'd you like, fare in those tournaments? Pretty well? Not, not awful, but not like at the top either. This is like kind of like in the middle. But still there. Yeah. Still way better than yeah. me. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Way better than like, me. I mean, like I told you, man, all these guys are killers. Yeah, dude, they're they crazy. They me out of the water. Are you that Lego Master Builder on Fortnite? <laughs> no, <laughs> not Fortnite. <laughs> um, nah, dude, people, especially like the young kids on Fortnite, they're just like... Cracked. Yeah, they're just, yeah, yeah, all crazy. It's like... I, like, I keep seeing like this little black kid, and he's got the keyboard completely sideways, yeah. and he's facing the screen. <laughs> just crazy fast with That's it. That's so sick, it's though, crazy. man. Yeah, so there's... um. When I worked at the eSports Center, um, I also worked, um, I think Sergio said on the podcast, I worked at an eSports Center, and, dude, you see kids like that just coming in, like, all the time, just crazy. Just, so, what, like, so recently I've been seeing, like, CSGO tournaments. Do you know about CSGO Counter-Strike? CSGO? Counter-Strike? No. It's, like, an OG, like, OG game, and it's still going. It's pretty yeah, cool. It's, it's dope. It's dope. There's these guys, I shit you not, they're leaned back like this, they sit all the way in, and they got the screen, like, yeah. right here, just, like, one inch from their face. How do you do that, though, yeah. man? <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah, they probably got, like, independent <laughs> movement of their eyes. Yeah. Chameleon Dude, type style. And they're cracked, dude. Dude, yeah. And I don't know the benefit of it. I think it's all, for me, negative. Yeah. yeah I, what do you, you're literally, you can literally see the pixel of the screen at that point. Dude, it's like, and if it's not like that, I, there's also the opposite, where, like, People at the esports center that I worked at, the the monitor would be like this way, flat, and they would be like like this, you know, like looking over it, and like they're 
the the monitor's like right here so it's like their hands are like oh tucked God. under the monitor you know it's like dude that's crazy yeah because I was, I was watching him stream how'd you get Belmore on the stream by the way you just playing it and you don't, yeah, you don't yeah. really care no I don't care if they copyright it it's whatever whatever <laughs> yeah so I don't care you just looked relaxed <laughs> you just looked like yep I'm beating ass I'm just beating ass right now it was awesome just being ass honestly. yeah I mean uh I don't know, man. Like, I really, I took, like, all that stuff serious for a few years and, like, the whole streaming thing. And, like, I, like, did it, like, full time for a while. And that was, that was cool, but it wasn't consistent. So it was, like, a lot of ups and downs with it for sure. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I, I competed in so many games. Like, I did Halo. I did Overwatch. Gears? Uh, no, not Gears. Gears is awesome, though. I wish I did. Gears is a little too old. No, it was just, um, by the time, like, I wanted to kind of get into it, it was already, like, dying out. And there wasn't, like, much of a scene for it. Um, but, dude, like, Gears 2, like, dude, that was, watching awesome. some of that stuff is awesome, yeah. Um, and then a lot of those, like, Gears players, like, now they play Halo, so it's really cool to see them, like, still, like, in that kind of realm. Um, yeah, dude, and then I did, like, uh, H1Z1, which is, like, one of the first, like, Battle Royale games, yeah. OG games. yeah did that one a lot and then um yeah from there I went to Overwatch and then I did Apex um the first seasons of Apex I was doing like all the pro scrims and all that stuff oh badass yeah that was really cool that game is actually the game that got me into Warzone oh yeah cause I've started playing it cause I think Warzone came out first right uh honestly I don't even remember I just remember Apex well I mean either way it's like you still had a blackout so like it must have been you know, Blackout and then Warzone, like... You ever played Apex, Holzer? Just a little that I hung out here with you. That game is legit. It's still going awesome. strong. Yeah. One of my old teammates uh, got second place now at, at the World Championship thing. It was crazy. I was like, that's awesome. He was on, like, FaZe and everything. It was awesome. Oh, dude, did you see that stuff that happened with FaZe, like, like a couple months ago? They just booted everybody? Yeah, yeah, they're, like, rebuilding it. Thoughts on that? Um, I don't know, man. Like, it's obviously it sucks for all the content creators and players and stuff. Like, that's, I mean, no one ever wants that, especially if you're signed as like some kind of org. Um, but like, that's kind of the sad reality of like all these organizations going to like corporate places. That's what happens. Yeah. The, you go into a corporate place, the corporate place takes over, and then they change everything and don't understand the gaming realm at all. And,. You know, that's that's how that happens. Yeah, I really they were just signing anybody to phase, yeah, not yeah. even gamers, just yeah. anybody. Just mostly like IRL guys in in real life guys. Well, I mean, but luckily the the guys that were the true gamers in phase and stuff like that when they did get dropped, at least they had that name. They had that following yeah. already, you know. Like once once you get a big name like that, like you as long as you're not an awful person, <laughs> you will kind of always have, you know, your, fan, your fans yeah, are going to fall. Yeah, exactly. Which is which is cool. Um, I'm glad they kept some of the OGs. Yeah. They did cut a lot of OGs too, which which does suck. The, the only phase member I still really watch is only Phase Jeff. That's it. Yeah. He's like the only one that I've. He's been consistent, and I still just watch him every day, just enjoy him. And he's still on the team. Oh yeah, but he's an OG like Phase House days, like the first Phase yeah. House. And who's untouchable? Phase Banks. Yeah, probably Banks. Yeah. Only Banks the only one. Like, Cause he's like the guy who like started everything, so like when everyone got kicked off and all that stuff, he kind of like took it over again. He was like, all right, this is my thing, and you know did whatever he had to do legally to get it back. So now he's like, I think he's like the sole owner again, and now it's like being established. It's again. about gaming again. Yeah, now it now it feels like genuine again, which is cool. And how do like their esports team fare? Are they are they pretty good or what do you think? Um. Well, I guess that it really depends on what, what game, um, okay. specifically, yeah. But like when my my friend played for um, Phase, they in Apex at least, they were they were good, but they weren't consistent. Um, when he did the World Championship thing, he played on a team called Furia, mm -hmm. which is I think they're from like South America or something. Okay. Is like where they're from. Um, but they're also like a big name, like big in like Counter Strike and everything too. Um, so when he did that, um, when he got second place, it was under that name, and then he went to Phase, and he had like a bit of a different team roster, and 
it just wasn't as consistent. You can, I don't know, you can kind of tell, like, no, everyone wasn't, like, in sync kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It just really depends on the game, I guess. But the thing is, is, like, FaZe will always have that, like, Call of Duty, like, like, they're, like, the kings of, like, that stuff. Like, FaZe and Optic, uh-huh. like, those two are, like, Call of Duty, like, all the sniping stuff, like, that's... You instantly think like phase or whatever. So I know phase banks and uh, nature just did like a quick scope. Oh yeah. Because banks doesn't play games anymore. Yeah. And nature does every day. And he's like, I'm gonna kill you. He got wrecked. Like yeah. nature got wrecked bad. <laughs> it was pretty embarrassing. And so you're not really doing gaming competitively anymore. No, not really. I guess like the most recent thing was like picking up Smash. Um, oh, that's because I was like. Uh, <laughs> So at the eSports Center, um, I was helping run all the tournaments and stuff, and they wanted me to do Smash weekly. So I did Smash every single Wednesday for like a year straight. Uh, and then I also did like um, our major events, which were like up to like 150 players, like $2,000 prize pools and stuff, like the big ones on the weekends. Uh, that was like once every month, every like a Saturday out of the month. Um, so I, I got to like really know like the SoCal like Smash community and stuff and like a lot of the SoCal Smash players um, SoCal is like one of the most like dominant regions other than like Japan um, so like all of them were like insanely good and I was like you know what like my main thing was like I came like they asked me to do the tournament and I came from like an FPS world where I didn't really know much like I'd watch a lot of Smash especially in like old Melee like on Evo and stuff like that so like I like, followed it and I knew the players and stuff but like when I when I started like hosting those tournaments, I was like, I don't want to be like the head guy that doesn't know a single thing about this game. Uh-huh. So like I started like really diving into it and like learning more and uh, just like all the details of the game, all the tech stuff of the game. Um, and then like when that started happening, I was like, dude, I have like all these insane players around me. Like I should like capitalize on that. So like they come to my tournaments and hang out and stuff and like um, you know I made. It, awesome like friends from it too yeah so we would just you know sit there and play and they would just like give me little tips or like whatever and start like teaching me and then like now it's like um i just went back to play last week uh just for fun just to hang out and play with them catch up and stuff uh because someone else is doing the tournament now uh and they're like dude like your progress like from when you started to like now is like insane <laughs> so uh you like being around that i was like dude i should like kind of take it seriously and try to see what i can do um again yeah so that's like kind of what i thought about but i don't think i'll take it like to anywhere close to what i was doing like the fps stuff so um but yeah that's like kind of the most recent thing because you know like what they always say if you're doing anything around people that are better than you you're gonna grow yeah yeah exactly yeah you just you like you'll learn from them and you pick it up like how they're doing it and then maybe surpass them and like dude but like there's a lot that goes into that stuff that like people don't really realize like a lot of like like I think like the biggest thing is like players will you know they'll play like 10 hours a day which is if that's what you want to do like that's cool whatever like, if that's how you want to grind and learn that's cool but like at some point you got to like stop doing that and like you know if whether you're recording yourself and like okay what did i do wrong here or, like how can i have won this state or like you know whatever the situation is uh like like doing that uh dude like it, it improves like your improvement will just like, it's like it's skyrocket like it's watching yeah. film you know yeah like it's just yeah i don't know it's like the, the way you practice and the way you do it like really matters yeah. and, and a lot of people don't really think about that stuff Cause there's a there's a guy who takes it really seriously, and he he realized that he needed to to be the best. He needed to go pixel by pixel, so he'd literally pause every pixel and write yeah, it down. Some people do that, yeah. So he knows like like all the frame down, down to the, the frame. Yeah. What's gonna happen when wow. it happens? Yeah. He. There's people that do that stuff, man. I, I don't couldn't imagine how many hundreds of hours it took, <laughs> and he did it for every every character. Yeah. That's that's the dedication. See, you right gotta there. get to that level, bro. See, I don't know if I want to be at that <laughs> level, bro. <laughs> Yeah, because he's been trying to get me to play Smash for, like, the past, like, two weeks now, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's saying, yeah. He just started getting into it, and then now you're telling me you're going to be savage level. Correction. I've been on Smash since <laughs> the GameCube days. No, 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 I know that, yeah. but you've been trying to get me on it for, like, Melee the past two the weeks. Melee is the best one. Melee is the best. Yeah. It is amazing. Which one's oh, that? dude. That's the, the first OG one, right? Yeah, yeah. Melee is, That's like, the best one. 
Yeah, probably. Oh. Like, the, it's such... Melee is one of those games that's, like, timeless because, like, you can play it casually and have so much fun, but there's such a big skill gap in the competitive, like, scene. It's, like, unreal. It's, like, it's awesome. But is that the true original one? I feel like there's one before there, there's, that. Um, the 64 one. Mm, okay. 64 one. I think there is tournaments, but, like, the cool thing and, like, what's fun to watch on the 64 one, that do, like, um... They have, like, a Super Smash Con event, and they'll do, like, 64 tournaments, but, like, they do... They also do like a combo uh, contest where they like set up crazy combos and stuff. It's very fun to watch. It's, it's like stuff you just wouldn't even think of would happen. <laughs> Really cool. I'm sure people get like crazy into the combos too. Like, yeah, just not letting them get off the map, just keep going and going. Yeah. Oh man, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> they'll do like crazy stuff too. Like, in, in that one specifically, the 64 one, they'll set up like items all over the place and then they'll like count it down and he'll start his combo and he'll like start over here and then like go hit the item and then like the item will trigger the character to go this way and then like he'll come hit. It's crazy. Like, it's like all over the place. It's like a, really th- cool. those Goldberg. Uh, those uh, what are they called those Goldberg uh, inventions you, you know what those are so it's pretty much like something happens here which causes a little ball to roll down a hill and activates this uh, one thing uh, and swings yeah, yeah, yeah. you yes, know yes. yeah yeah I forgot what those are called I think you're right it's, a, it's Goldberg something for sure I do think you're right I tell you <laughs> um, you said you were into Overwatch how good were you yeah uh, I was Grandmaster in Overwatch I played um, so the team I played on was like a team sponsored by the Houston Outlaws if do you know like the Overwatch League stuff uh, I used to dabble in it so Houston Outlaws was like the one of the Texas teams um, and I was on a team that was like sponsored by them uh, and we we like our tournament circuit thing was like playing other teams that were sponsored by like other Overwatch League teams and the tournaments were just like for charity it was really cool so it'd be like a minor league yeah, yeah, basically like, kind of like a minor league, yeah. Um, it was like a minor league, but, like, it wasn't, like, kind of anyone could play on in it um, as long as, like, your the team accepted you kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, that was that was awesome. I played off tank, and I played DPS for that. So I played a lot of D.Va in that team, and then I played, like, a lot of, uh, depending on what we need, like, McCree or Cassidy now. <laughs> uh, and then, like, Tracer, stuff like that. Hit scan characters. Uh, so, Widow. So, like, would you play, like, D.Va, like, D.Va Winston, stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, D.Va Winston, or, like, if we did Ryan, we'd do Ryan Zarya. I played Zarya a lot, too. I love Zarya. Yeah, Zarya's awesome. Um, do you like the, the old... Overwatch 2 is fun, but, like, the old synergy with, like, Overwatch. the main tank and the off tank, dude, it was it was really fun. I think what really killed Overwatch was Fortnite, because Overwatch got Game of the Year two years in a row, yeah. and then Fortnite came out, and then no one ever talked about Overwatch ever again, and then I was just there by myself, like, I don't <laughs> ever played it anymore. Yeah, I didn't really have a lot of friends that played Overwatch, um, so this is, like, this is a cool, like, full circle story. One of my Overwatch teammates is now the guitarist in Ankle Biter. <laughs> Oh, but, really? Yeah, his name is Jacob. Uh, we played on that team together, and now he plays an ankle biter, and now we're playing a show with ankle biter in San Diego uh, coming up at and some time. You guys <laughs> talk about it? Yeah, 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 yeah. We definitely, like... And, like, on that team, he was, like, one of, like, my best friends on that team, so we were, like, super close. And then when I moved out here, um, he also plays in a band called Strange Joy, and that band is from Houston, Texas, where he's from. Um... So I got to see him at program too and like catch up with him and it was like, dude, it was awesome. <laughs> very, and then so like now to be playing shows with him and stuff is very cool. And like at the time, um, at the time I wasn't as super into heavy music as I was like before that. So I kind of went through like heavy music and then like chill music and then like back into heavy music. What do you mean by chill music? Like a lot of like lo-fi hip hop, a lot of, um, I guess like a lot of like hip hop beats. I don't really. Like, I'm not a big fan of like hip hop rapping, uh-huh. but like the beats and stuff. Like I love that. Um, and then like a lot of like indie stuff, like chill wave stuff, like stuff like that. Um, and then I kind of like slowly got back into like heavy stuff because it's funny because I came from like deathcore, grindcore to like <laughs> super chill stuff, and then back into it. Um, so. Uh, so at that time we never really talked about like heavy music or like whatever like we didn't really you know um, acknowledge that world but we were like best friends and then like we kind of like 
I started, I like heard he was playing in a band. I was like, oh, what kind of like what kind of stuff is it, whatever. And I think at the time, this is like one of his older bands. It was like traditional, like uh, like just traditional hardcore stuff, or like maybe even post hardcore at the time. And uh, I was like, oh, that's cool, like whatever. And then um, like a few months later. I was like starting to like fully get back into it, uh, and then that's when I started like um, like really deep diving back into like heavy stuff, or whatever. And then I came across uh, his band Strange Shore, and, and I was like, dude, this is awesome. This is so awesome. And uh, dude, yeah. So I like I was like, dude, your band's so awesome, whatever. Uh, and it was like really cool, like I said, because we were like so close back then. And then I don't know, full full circle moment. And you came but, back, and now you guys got something to yeah, be. Yeah, now we got another thing to like bond over. So I'm. Super stoked for that show to like see him and like hang out with him and stuff. So and play with him too. Play, with play, him, play yeah. the same show. Yeah, I play the same show. It's just awesome. And when when he played a program, I was not even uh, playing an instrument yet. So <laughs> that was cool. So how long have you been playing an instrument for? Um. So, okay. So there's a there's there's a big there's also a big leap between my playing. So I I played guitar from like the age of like 11 to like probably like 16. Um, I played guitar. My I lived with my one of my cousin. He like lived with us, oh. um, and he was like crazy guitarist, like shredder kind of guitarist. Um, and obviously because we like lived together for a while and stuff, and he was always over. Um, he kind of put me on like a lot of uh, a lot of like heavier stuff and whatnot. Um, and so did my dad. But he was like really put me on like the newer stuff at the time, like the newer metalcore coming out, like all the old like rise record and all that stuff um and then yeah so i would always like be like hey can i like borrow your guitar (laughs) and like play it like not knowing how to play it at all you know and be like oh this is cool whatever and i guess like my my parents like saw that so they got me a guitar for christmas (laughs) uh so i got like my first guitar for christmas whatever uh i guess i could stop bugging them (laughs) um and then uh, eventually, so like my parents split up when I was 12. And then eventually my mom ended up remarrying. This is like a crazy story. Uh, she married like this super shitty dude who was like uh, not mentally okay. Like he was like okay, like for periods of time. Uh-huh. And then he would like, I don't know, just be crazy or whatever. Um, and like to an extent, like I get it, but it's like, because he was like discharged from like the army I think or something like that and he had like I don't know exactly what happened something like hurt him um, like in combat or whatever uh, so like to some extent I'm like okay like there's some leniency there but like at the same time you just can't be a shitty person you know um, so what he did was like he never worked and he like he had like his income from the government or whatever but it was like obviously never enough to like help and within like supporting the family and stuff um so my mom was like paying for everything and so like he would uh literally like go into my room and like steal my music stuff and this was like a reoccurring thing so he would like steal all my stuff and like sell it he like stole two guitars he stole like i was like borrowing like an electric drum kit kind of thing uh-huh. it wasn't like a full one but it was like the this drum kit thing and he like stole that and that like caused all this drama between like my friends and I was like, dude, this this guy's like fucking awful. And like uh, I would like put locks on the door and everything and he would like break the lock and dude it was like it was a nightmare for sure. So I like come home every day, like, okay, what's gone now? Um, so that stopped me from playing. Um, anything. Yeah. Well, the only thing I was doing at that time was um, like I said, I was like really into like lo-fi hip hop, so I made. I also produced a lot, so I did a lot of beats and stuff. Um, there's a whole another like lore section of that. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, I just had my laptop, so I was just like making beats or whatever. That was like my only source of like music, because like yeah, he stole my guitars, he stole that drum thing, he stole. Um, I had like MIDI keyboards to like like for making beats. Um, stole all that, sold it. Um, yeah, and so, like, I finally I moved out of there and went to my dad's. Um, and then I just never got another, like, like a hands-on instrument oh. until, like, a year and a half ago, two years ago. Like, it was, like, when I started, like, playing again. Uh, wow, really? So from, like, 16? Yeah. So now that's... Yeah. And now, now I'm 29. So. Wow. Yeah, so I went a long time without playing. Um, 
yeah my my all um, my friends alex and andy uh, which is like uh, we were trying to do like a project this is like before provoke we were trying to do a project that kind of like kept falling through and alex knew like he's like oh you used to play guitar right like i have an extra bass you can borrow uh if you want to like get back into it and then we can like start jamming and whatever uh so he let me borrow his bass he let me borrow an amp and dude i played every single day like annoyingly <laughs> every single day for like like maybe the whole year straight and i was like um like my girlfriend Evan was like she was be like you're seriously like playing again because <laughs> i was like always playing it you know and i told her i was like i have to like i didn't want to like let them down especially knowing how rusty i was and like like the muscle memory was kind of like basically all gone but like i knew how to play so it wasn't like awful um well like you said out out there you said that sometimes you just lock in yeah yeah dude i i have i have that super addictive personality like when i want to do something that's like like i'm i'm doing it (laughs) see and no wonder i mean no wonder right you're 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 good at the instruments you're good at the gaming you're good at the skating no wonder you locked in on all these and dude, I, you're like mastering all these crafts dude, my, my girlfriend she always gives me shit for it too she's like you're gonna start this new thing and you're gonna be like just focused on that i wonder what it is though well, now, i wonder what's next okay in your in your opinion would you say that's more uh talent or hard work honest i think it's just hard work because everything i mean because everything i started it wasn't like natural you know like it was like i had to like really like work for it and i think like the guitar thing kind of like really showed that because um what i did was like what what really helped me was i started playing bass and i was like okay well like i'm just starting again like trying to learn one song and like reading all the tabs is gonna like take forever so i got i actually got um rocksmith if you guys are familiar with that Mm -mm. rocksmith is like it's like Guitar Hero, but like a real guitar. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, so I was like, like seeing it like that come down at you is like super easy to read and you can kind of react to it like really easy. A little more engaging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, dude, I was like on that every single day, like I said, for like an hour at least a day. Just practicing and I was like, I just don't want to let these guys down, you know? Um, so, so, yeah, and I think that like putting in that effort and stuff like definitely, you know, feel hard work and like, Especially now, it definitely feels like the reward pay, is paying off. So that's really awesome. <laughs> um, so out of all of them, between the the gaming, skating, and the music, what came first? Definitely skating. Definitely yeah. skating. Okay. Yeah, definitely skating. I definitely st- I started skating and when I was like ten. It took me like a year and a half to learn how to kickflip. <laughs> it took so long, but then when I learned that, it kind of like opened the doors to like everything else. Everything else just fell. Yeah. Then I like really started understanding skating when I could like consistently kickflip and I was like okay this is what I was doing wrong and like this is and then I like started to realize like skateboarding like takes your entire body to like really like when you start really getting into it like the little things like having to like turn your shoulders to help you turn around and like stuff like that or using your hips yeah, and using all your that hips, stuff like, even like your uh, like where your head placement is like something you wouldn't think about but it's like the center of your weight through your whole body like where you're looking like really matters because that's where you're gonna go like dude all the little details I like really zoned in on <laughs> uh, yeah and so yeah it's just the same thing like just skating in my the house I grew up in had like a concrete backyard um, which in Texas is really rare, <laughs> um, but I see them all like all out here, which is another different thing. Oh, that was perfect. Yeah, so it was like perfect. Uh, so I skated there all the time, made all these like homemade like makeshift ramps and stuff. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and then just you know, I go back inside, just watch skate videos all day, and be like, okay, how are they doing this or like whatever, or like this is what I want to try to do, like you know, stuff like that. It's the same thing, like super addictive personality, like just grinding it. <laughs> And so um, these are all three completely different things, right? Yeah. Skating, yeah. gaming, and music. But you've been in all of them within a, a good amount of time. Yeah, for sure. How, how, how different or similar would you say the scenes within all of them fare? Skating and music is pretty identical. Um, I feel like they're such a good hand-in-hand com- combo. Um, especially you always hear the stories of like... Oh, Tony Hawk got me into like heavy music or like uh-huh. punk music or whatever. Um, so that was like that always felt kind of natural, but like gaming was like definitely like the outcast. And and gaming like back then was definitely not like what it is now. Like gaming back then was like 
I, you were kind of like the outcast, you know? And like now it's like very accepted. Now it's like the biggest thing. And now it's, you know, it's evolving to like whatever it is now. But um, yeah, like doing all the tournaments and stuff, it was like, I didn't really have anything in common with them other than the gaming. And like, sure, there was like a few people here and there, like, you know, we sh- shared similar like music tastes or like, you know, heavy music, whatever. Um, but there's like very few strictly business over there yeah yeah that's really what it feels like and i don't know if that be- is just like the competitive nature of it but yeah it really just feels like strictly business so they're like locked in 24 7 yeah 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 because you have to have like perfect synergy when you're like competitive gaming for yeah. sure just because any movement the other team's like is you have to think the other team is is working in synergy as well yeah everything matters Communication, yeah, one false movement will topple your literally oh, tower. Yeah, sure. Literally, yeah. Especially like games like like Overwatch, for example. Like someone, one of your teammates, like overextend and then they die. It's like a numbers game. So like, if your teammate dies first, the other team can just they have more people than you. They can capitalize and like whatever. Like you know, yeah. so instantly thought of Clash of Clans. Yeah, like <laughs> even even well even stuff like that is like, as soon as you like lose something, like the game's over. You know, like or like that team fight or whatever is over. It's like, yeah, all those little things matter. It was really embarrassing one time. There was like a Town Hall 3 left, and I was like a Town Hall 7 at the time, and that's all I was left, and I was the only one that had an attack left, and I was like, I'll just, I'll just fucking, I'll make something up and just fuck with them, and I totally lost, and we lost the work because of that. Oh, man, I got roasted for like weeks because of that. <laughs> They're like, oh, don't let them attack anybody. Oh, yeah. It was bad. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> but Overwatch is like some different level stuff because I played with not like a team but with a group of yeah. friends yeah. and we were all pretty dialed in for like yeah. two years pretty hard that's awesome it was awesome I and play they, in here and they even got specific workout for or pre-workout too they do oh, yeah. G-Fuel G-Fuel did you ever get into any stuff like that or like any rituals when you were competitively gaming yeah for sure I definitely have my my weird things I do when I game uh, especially if it's like a tournament I'll always go and buy like the hand warmers and like do the whole hand warming thing. Um, and then like... And I, is that I, specific I, to you or is that kind of like something that the gaming community does? Um, it's pre- Yeah, it's pretty common in the gaming community. Um, as far as like my specific weird things is yeah. like... Uh, like the way I sit, it was like really weird. And I had to like be like... Uh, like a certain way on the desk for like my mouse to feel like the most comfortable and then like I also did like the, the weird curved keyboard thing um, cause back then I played like on a really slow sensitivity and like when I would curve it the keyboard's not out this way to like you know when you're moving it to so when you're playing, you, you don't have your elbow down, you have your elbow up, and you're using your whole hand? Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, for a while. When I was on a slow sensitivity, I was. Uh, now it's mostly like, uh, just like my arm is like on the desk, and I'm just kind of like... You're flicking? Yeah, yeah, mostly flicking now, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, like, just like the weird way I would sit, like I would like, when I would compete, I would like take off my shoes and like put my, uh, I like sit weird, like I like sit on my leg, which is probably not the best thing to do (laughs) especially for a long period of time but that's like the way I felt most comfortable uh and then like play whatever and then um just like the little things like uh like on the screen like the way the colors look and stuff uh I would like change all my settings to make it look more vibrant Mm -hmm. so like the colors and like the players would like pop out more um that's like what I would do (laughs) um and this is like PC games, but like on console, when I played console, like Halo stuff, it wasn't anything crazy, like out of the ordinary. It's just like the hand warmers. Um, honestly, that was it. Really. Is, is Halo like, because to me, Halo never felt like fast paced. No, it felt like not. more just hit it's, your shots. It's very, when you play Halo, like, it can be fast paced if, if the team plays like that. Uh-huh. Um, but it's definitely more of like, tactical kind of kind of shooter which is weird because you see you think halo you don't think tactical at all but when you when you play it like at that high level it's like like you got to like spread out on the map kind of thing because um halo is like since especially since it's an arena shooter there's like power-ups on the map so you gotta like time it to like get the power up because like the the power up will make boost like, you yeah you just like if you if you get the power up and like capitalize on it like 
it's it's a big difference so like in that sense of like being tactical of like getting on um you know map positioning being ready for that stuff uh obviously like hitting your shots like the strafe movement in that game the that game was like very like strafe heavy so if like you had a good strafe or whatever there was another thing that was called like gandhi hopping and that was where you like jump and like keep hitting the crouch button and your character would like go up and down so the head hit box would like would like keep going up and down in the air um because like if you if, if you like know halo it's like three body shots and one headshot and that's a kill or four straight heads up um so like when you're doing that like crouch move it's hard, it's like hard. yeah it's hard to get the kill um yeah it's named after a, a player named scott gandhi his name his gamer tag was gandhi um which he now works for like 343 like he works for halo and stuff now. so he works really for like cool. Bungie yeah, and yeah yeah it's really so what's cool. what's your favorite halo Halo 3, for sure. Yeah, Halo 3, um, Halo 2, close second. And then I'd probably say Halo Reach. Halo Reach, I think I had the most fun on, because just me and my friends would just make yeah. random maps. Halo Reach was definitely the best casual game. Like, it was awesome to, like, play all the customs and do all that stuff. Um, Halo 3 was also, also really good. Um, yeah, and then I played a lot of Halo 5, which was the odd one out <laughs> I, I didn't like it yeah no one really did and that's because it didn't feel like Halo it was like very fast paced it was like a your character had like this jetpack thruster thing so you would like you could like run run slide and like juke your enemy with a thruster which was like never in a Halo it was like it, it honestly felt like closer to a Call of Duty than it did like Halo it was like Call of Duty with Halo weapons because I think Halo is like slowly dying. Yeah, it definitely is. They're trying, uh, they're trying to bring it back. It definitely is, and I think Halo Infinite was a step in the right direction, but it's like, at the same time, there's a lot of, I guess, okay, well, I guess this really depends on which side of the community, because you have like the super casual um, side of Halo, which they want to cater to a lot because that's like the core players. And then you have the super competitive side, which is like a whole nother thing. And there's like no happy medium between the games. So like all the competitive players want one thing, all the casual players want one thing. And it's like hard to kind of meet it in the middle. And then at the same time, it's like, if you look back to like old, like Halo 3, um, especially, yeah. Halo 3 is probably the best example. There was like, all these crazy advertisements there was like everything it was like everywhere like you could like you you would see it everywhere you go kind of thing and it's just like in such today especially like an oversaturated thing when when where it's like still only an xbox exclusive in in a day and age where it's like people are playing on whatever they want to play on you know it's cross play whatever like that kind of stuff like all that those little things kind of really like i guess like hinder it you know like and like, I don't know, just, like, Xbox in general isn't really, like, where it was. I feel like nowadays, like, PlayStation's kind of, like, taking over. Um, and, yeah, I don't know, it's just, like, it It definitely feels like, this, and similar to Gears, like, it's just slowly, slowly dying off. Yeah, which is very unfortunate because it's a great series, and it's, like, there's a lot of also, like, nostalgia connected to it, which is, you know, people like that, too. Um... Yeah, I don't know, just... I kind of like... Halo kind of made generations of gamers, like, yeah. literally. Yeah, for sure. Like, people grind that game like crazy. I remember I played the campaign, like, like 40 times yeah. when I was growing up. Just dude, kept playing it. Couldn't stop. Replayability, like, dude, is awesome. All the glitches and stuff. Yeah, even all the glitches, like... They, they, like, patch all that stuff now, but that was, like, half of the fun back then. It was, like, doing all the crazy, like, super jumps and, like, getting out of the map and just, like, all the, like rocket sword cancel stuff the dude it was awesome it so was like part so of the fun obviously the makers are trying to keep halo alive right? yeah but do you think there's just you just got to let it go or well, do you think there's something that they can do to where they can get it to the top tier level that they once had i me personally uh they do destiny right but no not anymore no no oh, so never mind after, <laughs> <laughs> um after halo reach um bungie sold it and just focused on destiny um, so now it's by this company, 343 Industries, um, which made Halo 4, which was all, like, that was, like, the point of, like, okay, Halo's starting to die. Because, like, 
the difference of like reach and four was like nine day difference. It was like it felt like a completely different game. And like when you have a new company taking over such an iconic franchise series thing, like the first impression is probably like the most important thing. And it just like it was not Halo. <laughs> it was like all these abilities where it's like the shields and like jetpacks and like uh, like the clone thing that they you could do in there there was like just all the stuff that was so different like reach had jetpacks and like they had abilities and stuff too but it was like they took it to like a whole nother level kind of thing and it just it was just so different like even like the look of it it looked really weird didn't look like a classic halo game at all um yeah i don't know so you'd say it was almost completely different yeah, for sure. So would you have rather them just stop that reach? Or were you glad to see that they at least were trying to do something with it? And- yeah, like, I, I'm happy. Okay, like, as a Halo player and, like... Fan? Fan, you know, I was definitely happy for it to, like, still keep going. But um, it was one of those things you just really had to, like appreciate it for what it was yeah and not compare it to like the other halos and if you did that it was fun and it was an okay game but if you sat there comparing the two the entire time it was like this isn't really halo you know because i feel like kind of letting it go at i mean maybe reach wasn't its high point right but i feel like kind of letting it go at that moment would be better than the disappointment of having the five yeah right yeah and i and part of me always wonders if like Bungie like knew it was gonna go that way and they were like okay we're done with it because it was going that way or something I always wonder that because it's just so crazy to me to like okay here's one of the most popular FPS franchises in the world and then later you know and just and don't be wrong like I, I like like I like Bungie as like a you know game producer whatever developer stuff like that because like I play Destiny a lot um so like I like the stuff that they're doing like so I just wonder like they're like okay let's ditch this and then focus on Destiny like like did they know it was gonna go that way you know like I don't know <laughs> see cause I think they're really trying to compete with Call of Duty at the time yeah and everything's about skins and all this stuff and I think if they would've just kept it how it was blue and blue and red yeah and that's it just and then you just get your different little armors. Like yeah, they, have, yeah. they had different armor cosmetics, uh, yes, like different right. uh, well, different helmets and stuff like that. That was cool. That, that was, was cool. sick. And there was like a certain one where if you had to unlock everything to get it. Oh yeah. What um, was that? I forgot what. It was. I can't remember. I I know the two helmets, but I can't remember which one was which. It was either the Hayabusa helmet or the Recon helmet. I think it was the Flaming Recon helmet too, maybe. Um, the Hayabusa one was like the the ninja looking one. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. And you could put like a katana on your back. I think that I think that might have been the one for all the achievements. But do that, yeah, that skin was awesome. But I think they started they started trying to compete with Call of Duty, and I don't think you can at a certain point, especially when yeah. Warzone came out. I think it all happened all at once because COVID came out, Warzone came out like yeah. shortly after, and it just took over the world, like literally. It I just, mean, that's that's all I did. Yeah. Was, I was, like, the only game, like, how you said, like, oh, kind of pay attention to what I did was Warzone and yeah. Overwatch to, con- to an extent. I wasn't very, I was really a diamond on Overwatch, but I liked playing. Yeah, that's so good, though. But, like, Warzone, I would be like, okay, everything I do matters. Yeah. And I'd get, like, 20 kill games, like, every game. Yeah, awesome. Whoa, man, when I would, when I would <laughs> tag along with this dude, like, he would yeah. literally coach me <laughs> step by step. Uh, hoser, uh, hoser, okay. come over here. Come here, do this, do that. You yeah. know, I loved it. I love it. Yeah. You know, and because I was, I was wanted to be like a real technical like that. I always yeah. wanted to be like how he dissects his gaming. Always wanted to do it, yeah. but I just don't have the patience for it. I just run a car ninety eight MP five, and I would just, patience. I would just fucking. <laughs> oh man, I love quick scoping too. So having yeah. like a fast car ninety eight on Warzone, it was, dude, that's awesome. it's awesome. It was the best. Yeah, dude, like, when you get into it like that, it's, uh, it's a lot of patience, it's a lot of failing, it's a lot of repetitiveness of dying or, like, whatever, losing, whatever. It gets old quick, for sure. But you gotta, like... What's, your, what's, points, your, so. what's your least favorite way to lose in, like, like a battle royale? In a battle royale? Um, in a battle royale specifically, like, okay, 
I guess the first thing that comes to mind is like Apex sometimes has like horrible audio and in a game like that audio is so important so like someone will be like right next to you behind you or like whatever and you just can't hear them and it's not like the game has like dead silence or something um, so you just I mean and you're playing like especially competitive whatever you don't hear them at all and then you're just dead and that's it <laughs> and that's something that on the producer side that they failed to to yeah. get right yeah a lot a lot of games are like that though yeah it's it's you know funny enough it's, it's like a lot of especially battle royals have problems with that which I don't I don't get why but like I'm not gonna like shit talk to them whatever um but like yeah I don't know it's just very common especially in battle royales to have like horrible audio um cause yeah in a game like that it's so important to I mean you have one life you know what I mean so um but like something like if the game had dead silence or whatever okay like you know fair whatever cause I can use that too right so um but yeah just something like that in a, in a game like Apex specifically or like obviously when there's like a certain meta where like a weapon is like obviously way stronger than the other it's like that can be annoying <laughs> i was never the really the type to get into metas i, I always felt like i wanted to go against yeah meta i don't know why yeah i don't know if it made me cooler or not but i just totally it's, against it it's funner that way it's funner to like like okay i don't have to use this to like be at the top or like you know have the advantage really you know whatever it is but once you get a hold of that meta you and you start it, feeling yeah. that power, yeah. you're just, oh my god. Hey, trust yeah. me, when I had the Grau MP5, I, I was god. Yeah. The, I love that thing. The DMR, man. The DMR <laughs> was insane. Yeah. So, I never uh, used that. At the same time, it is nice to like be a part of that, but it's like... Uh, I just hate the idea of like a forced meta. Like uh, oh. Overwatch is a perfect example. Like yep. uh, there was like this thing called the GOATS meta where it was like three tanks and three supports. And it was like just this uh, unbeatable meta for like years, and you just you either you either played that meta or you lost. Like it was just that simple. The thing and when with, you don't even have a chance, I mean that's no fun. The thing with yeah. Overwatch is that like one small nerf will change the meta of yeah. everything. It makes a big difference. Like with any any character gets nerfed, it'll change the meta. That's it's I I like it, and I don't like it at the same time. Because for me, when I played Overwatch, I was either like. Ana, like com- like competitively, mm-hmm. or I was a Lucio troll, <laughs> and there was like no no in between. And I played McCree a lot too. I think, but. I think Lucio is my second or third most played. He has like two hundred something hours. Lucio is like. just like this super fun, fast character, and you can just boot people off the map. Yeah. So I'll just be wall riding like as high as I can, and I see someone just jump, boop them off, and I run away. It's the funnest, it's the awesome. funnest thing. You gotta try it. You really gotta try it. I would love to try it. See, but I want to I, I want to <laughs> get into a game. That is, um, that everybody is playing, you yeah, know, because Overwatch, yeah. like you said, that thing is done. Nobody's there anymore, right? Uh, it still has a, a, it still has a good player base. It just doesn't have as much of a following, a much of a following, and as much as like a genuine casual player base. It's not mainstream anymore. I feel like I'm always late to the to the fucking. <laughs> bus stop you know i'm never catching it dude I t- I'm, i've been telling you to get hell divers hell divers is yeah it's still riding that dude, wave right now but hell divers is a Ring. pc thing right no it's, no, it's on ps5 too yeah. playstation um, 5 <laughs> hey. well, I don't know if it's on, I don't sorry know. brother <laughs> i think i think your ps4 would explode running that <laughs> oh totally dude. yeah my ps4 is almost close to exploding running netflix dude, you like yeah it's like a jet engine like you just turned off yeah, <laughs> it's like dude with the one we have too it's like crazy um but yeah dude andrew's been trying to get me to play that Helldivers? yeah forever you haven't gotten it no i haven't gotten it i've been i've been slacking i think you're gonna have to get on it I, I also know that that's a game that I would really enjoy, which is probably half of the reason why I haven't gotten it. So it's like I so I found about found out about the game like a few months before it came out, yeah. and I sent it to my friend. I was like, "Hey, bro, it's coming out on your birthday. You should totally get this game. It looks badass." Yeah. And then he started playing it, and I didn't play it for like two months, and I was like, "I just don't have time right now. I don't have time." And he gets telling me how fun it is, and I keep seeing all the videos. Yeah. Oh man, then I played it. Oh, it's so fun. Yeah, dude, it looks awesome. It looks it looks great, but like. I just know it's one of those things I'm just gonna sink time into. And I'm like, I, I don't, don't, yeah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm sure, mention- I'm sure your girl wouldn't appreciate that either. Yeah, no, definitely not. You did mention Elden Ring earlier, though. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, like, I just started Elden Ring, and dude, I'm, I'm hooked. <laughs> so, I, I can't. So what about it makes it so good? Do you think? Because I haven't played it. Um, 
Yeah, from completely different than all the other games. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 like, part of that for me is, like, the challenge is fun, for sure. Like, I, I enjoy the challenge, so it's, like, um, the only other Souls game I played was Dark Souls 2, which apparently is, like, the worst one in the series. I think 3 is the best. The best one? I think so. Well, I, I've only played two, and apparently everyone says that's the worst one in the series. Um, so, like, but, but like, as far as that, like, Elden Ring is, like, like, obviously the challenge. Um, and then going into it blind, there's just so many things you would just not expect to happen that happens. And then there's so many different ways to play it, which I really like. Like, right now, I'm, I'm doing, like, a just, like, a katana samurai kind of build. Uh, but, like, you could play it, like, from range. You could do, like, the bows. You could do, like, the the magic stuff. You could do, like... There's thousands. Yeah, there's so there's many ways. so sick. You can go just, like, punching people or, like, so whatever. The, the like, whole, dude, it's awesome. Build, I think, uh, Asmogold, I think his name is. Oh, yeah. The shimmer? Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> he said, yeah, my problem was dodging, so... I made a build to not have to dodge at all. It's just like a total defense build, and he just holds up a shield and takes like the littlest amount yeah. of damage and just beats ass. It's so funny. Yeah, and there's just so many combinations you can do. It's just, dude, it makes it fun. It makes it like, and then like I'll just keep dying, dying, dying. And I'm like, damn, like, all right, I got it this time, <laughs> and just keep going and going and going. And yeah, because I think I think he saw Kai Sanat just like. Mm -hmm. Grind it. Oh yeah, because yeah, I, I, I never really yeah. watched any. I, I've just seen um, people talking about it all the time. Yeah. But that Kai Sanat clip, I didn't watch the whole stream either. But I saw he was battling a boss. Yeah. It looked epic as Dude, fuck. The fights are crazy, and I, I've only. So apparently, I thought I did the first boss, but apparently I did the second one. <laughs> and that's the, that's the other fun to it, is like, it doesn't really give you direction. Yeah, it's not it, It's truly like open world. Like, it'll put you in a place and you can just like, yeah. okay, wherever you wanna go. Uh, and obviously like, you'll know when you're in an area you're not supposed to be, cause like the enemies are like crazy hard. Um, but yeah, that's the other part I like about it. It's like very, very adventure like so it, it's it cool have, does it ever end then um oh, yeah technically yeah like you beat all the bosses you, but you can still play you can still play and like keep roaming because everything will keep respawning and like so the, the other thing i like that they do is like at like the little i forget what they're called in elden ring but like the little bonfire things that you rest at mm. when you rest there they like it'll heal you whatever it'll do all that the grace <laughs> the grace yeah the grace um It'll like heal you, whatever. But when you do it, and I don't know, I don't remember if this was like this in Dark Souls Two, but when you when you sit there, whatever, all the enemies respawn. So you can like go through a dungeon and like make it to a point and be like, okay, now I'm gonna go back and heal. But if you go back and heal, everything, everything is there again. So it's like another challenge, and I, I like that a lot. It's like that in like a Jedi Survivor and. Um, the Jedi Souls games. I don't know if you played them. Oh, um, is that like the what, Fallen something? That one? Yeah, Fallen Order and then yeah, Jedi yeah. Survivor. Yeah. It's like that as well, where you heal and everything respawns. Yeah, I like that mechanic. Yeah. You should, that That's a good game that you could play. That's a nice Souls game. For Jedi you. Souls. Yeah. Uh, Jedi, like Jedi Fallen Order. That's a game that you could... That's like an entry-level Souls game. For that sure. game looks great. Dude, so, you, got, you got to dive right so in. So you mentioned that the second Dark Souls was the worst one. Oh. So what had happened was that this, like... This is like... it's What I heard is it's impossible to do in Japan. But he started at the bottom of whatever company made Dark Souls. Yeah. He made Dark Souls 1. And then he got, like, this huge promotion. So he was off of the Dark Souls 2 project. And it did so bad that they brought him back for 3. And now he made Elden Ring. So that's okay. yeah. Well then, yeah, that would make sense. So he's pretty much like the goat of Souls games, the goat goat for sure. Yeah, dude, it's got me wanting to try like all the other Souls style games, like Sekiro and like uh, what's the other one, Bloodborne. Like, oh, so yeah. they need to remake Bloodborne. Yeah. For PC. That would be awesome, because it's only PS4, PS4, right? Yeah, that would be awesome. So like my first introduction to like Souls type games was Bloodborne. Yeah. And. It was my friend, I, and we would go over and just play. Like, we would take turns fucking dying. Yeah. And then we would watch this one guy. I don't even remember his name, but he would do it at level one, every boss. And him just raging <laughs> would just make my whole night. I just love, it's good. It's like... Good content. Imagine playing level one, the final boss. 
That's intense. I have, you know, I have seen people. Uh, I'm not sure if it was Elden Ring or which game exactly, but they'll do bare bone build whatever. Yeah. And they'll try and go as far as they can. So do you think you'll ever get to that level? I don't know. I don't think so. That's that's crazy. It's like, I don't know. I would like to for sure, but I don't know if I want to put that much time into it. So, so there's like a mod pack that I've seen for Elden Ring where you can get all your friends to play together. Oh, sick! Uh-huh. And they did like a Ninja Turtle build. It was so awesome, dude. dude. That's cool. They had like a turtle shell and the green heads and then whatever weapon they wanted, and they were just beating ass. Like all the bosses be like four of them just all beating ass. It was so were they cool. color coded? No. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they should have been. But it was cool though that like you could do that type of shit. It is a yeah. mod that you need to play with your friends. It's not very hard though, and people mod games all the time, so yeah. it's not like, is it illegal? I don't think it's illegal, right? I feel like in a game like that, if you're doing it co-op, no, I don't see the problem. As long as it's not like a, like a PvP kind of thing, then I don't see the problem. Yeah, but and especially if it's just like um, something like that where it's like more like for the aesthetic or like whatever, like, no. Like a lot of there's mods for everything, like uh, Lethal yeah. Company. I was telling you about, like, yeah, yeah, it's like we mod the shit mods. out of that game. Yeah. I definitely have had the, uh, to my girlfriend, she went crazy on the Stardew mods. <laughs> on, like, making the the whole map, like, Japanese theme with, like, the cherry blossoms falling and everything. So she it's cool. Yeah, she That's games awesome. a lot with me, too. Yeah, yes. it's, it's very awesome. We have, like, the... a little game room? We, yeah, so in our... In our, in our Side-by-side room. PCs? Exactly, yeah. Oh, I'm cheesing right now. That's awesome. I gotta show you guys sometime. Like, our setup is honestly pretty crazy. Um... But that's like that's like our hobby. that's like what we do. You know that's what I mean? Awesome. So, um, yeah, we're just like as soon as we get home. Right now, she's been hooked on. Um, well, obviously, we play a lot, we play a lot of Destiny for sure, and we had like this really dope like group of friends, um, which we'll all be meeting soon in person because we're going to TwitchCon uh, in September. So we'll get to like meet that group of friends that we've awesome. been playing with for a long time. So that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, like every Saturday we'd be doing like the Destiny raids with our friends and stuff, and just like grinding for like, like because in the, the Destiny raids you get like exotic, um, depending on what raid you do. It's like a certain exotic, and the the drop rate is like five percent or something. So you gotta like keep grinding it to get that weapon kind of thing, um, and you can only do it once a week. So. Um, so yeah, every week we'd like rotate, do a different one or whatever. Uh, we did that for a while and then we were playing that new game. I'm like blanking on the name right now. Um, it's kind of like Destiny though. Um, yeah. I, I, it just I, came out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got like the, the bunny girl yeah. electric. Um, I, I can't, how am I blanking the name? I remember what you're talking about. Um, I know what you're talking about. But yeah, that game's really dope. So that's what we've been playing lately. Um, it's free to play, right? Yeah, it's free. Um, but like that, that my PC's kind of old, and that game kind of like takes a lot to run. Like my PC runs at like ninety percent, one hundred percent CPU. Like it's gonna fry my PC, but it's super fun. <laughs> um, time, yes. time to upgrade. Yeah, definitely enough. Uh, Did you build your own PC or? Yeah, I built mine. I built mine. I built hers. Uh, I've helped like friends build theirs and stuff. Uh, and build another one pretty soon. Yeah. yeah. Well, no. Sadly, so I was really into like wanting to build a computer and I was like learning everything on how to build it. Yeah. And then at the time was like during COVID, no parts were available. Dude, and yeah. only like pre pre builds were available. So I just like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna bite it. Yeah. I'd love to build my own PC. Yeah, dude, that that whole period was like the Terror. worst for yeah. PCs. It was like, like the worst time for like anyone to want to get into PC gaming. Yeah. And then that's when I wanted to get PC gaming. <laughs> yeah, it was awful. There everything was like Everyone was being like, like scalped and like prices. Everything was super high for what you could even find. Like graphic cards were like two thousand dollars, which is like a whole PC or something, like crazy. Uh, and then now it's like more reasonable. And now it's probably like three or four hundred uh, for a graphics card. But so what's kind of like a dream setup like, for you? What's a dream setup? Yeah. Um, honestly, nothing crazy. Like I, I'm very, um, like, I'm very. Sp- specs about my PC and not like the way it looks whatever um, so like just like a simple nice crazy monitor for me like with gaming like some like 280 hertz or something crazy like that just something simple like that nice keyboard I, I have like the one I like I have the mouse I like are you like a uh, brand guy like you stick to a brand or you kind of just what what feels good yeah what feels good like I'll, I'll definitely try stuff I'm, I'm very open to like trying new stuff um 
and then like my girlfriend is like super into like building keyboards she's like crazy about the hobby she has like six or seven keyboards uh and they're all like custom built some of them are like pre like pre-bought i guess but then she like custom them and stuff um so like as far as you know brands or whatever yeah i don't know i don't really stick to anything uh, she doesn't really stick to anything random frank p yeah yeah watch him a lot does she watch him yeah we both watch him a lot yeah I've, I've been sending his videos like Cool Tech Under 50. Yeah. Totally yeah. got to check that out. Dude, we watch those all the time. And that guy loves making keyboards. Yeah. So he has like, I couldn't even tell you how many keyboards this guy has. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's insane, awesome. but I feel like I was going to recommend that, but you already watch them. So. Yeah, we watch them all the time. As soon as the new videos come out, we'll like, we're, we're, we're definitely like, okay, we're going to eat. We eat at our computer, like watching YouTube. <laughs> like, I was going to say, you eat before you watch YouTube videos? Well, crazy. <laughs> nah. Just nah, sitting to eat yeah, without yeah, YouTube. I know. What the- <laughs> Dude, she always makes fun of me for it, too. She's like, you need your YouTube, right? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the meme going around. Like, my girl makes fun of me, too. Because, like, I was like, oh, hold on. I gotta get the Netflix on real quick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it feels yeah, like a wasted meal. Like I got a full belly, but it's like a wasted <laughs> meal. Cause like there was no entertainment, so like what's <laughs> it was it worth it? You know? Is that kind of like brain rot away? <laughs> totally. Yeah, it's gotta be. It is, but cooked generation for surezies. But it's cool. Whatever. You ever like you and your girl play like, Minecraft or something together? Yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you played uh, Takes Two? We started it. Um, we are maybe halfway through it. Same, same with us. I mean, Dude, we're, like, we're like a little couple ourselves. <laughs> Dude, it's awesome. Dude, it's so fun. I, at first, I was kind of like being a little stubborn about it. She was like, let's play, let's play, let's play. And I was like, I didn't think I would like it. So I didn't really play it or like give in to playing it much. And then we finally like recently started playing again. I was like, Dude, this is really dope. <laughs> I, I, I really appreciate like the the detail in each level. Yeah. And some of them are like, I am a little stupid, so there's some of them are kind of hard. Yeah, it's like, some, oh, it's, oh, it can be challenging, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, it's great. It's an awesome game. If anyone like wants to play a co-op game, that's probably one of the first recommendations for sure. Okay. Now, now the big couple game here, Overcooked. We definitely played some overcooked. You guys be yelling at each other? We we be yelling. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> but obviously like in a fun way. But yeah, it's it's uh I think that was like when we first started dating, like one of the first like little party games that we played and it was dude, it was so much fun. That's a great one, right? Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah it's a great icebreaker. Because it'll, be really, it'll really show you <laughs> what, what what each other is about. Are, are you the ticket reader or are you just the the doer? Dude, I'd be, I'm, I'm going everywhere. I'm doing everything I can. <laughs> I'm the ticket reader slash doer. I'm like, okay, you cut the lettuce, I'll get the chicken. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I'm just the I'm just mule. Put whatever on my back and I'll get it done. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that game, it's awesome. There's so many, like, iterations of that game now. I'm like, dude, what? there's all these crazy things. I'm like, dude, I gotta, I gotta try the new ones. I'm trying to find, like, because I'm trying to get my girl more into gaming. So I'm trying, yeah. like, Overcooked is one. I haven't played It Takes Two with her yet, but I'm just trying to find games like that. I've been trying to get her into the Switch. Uh, what's that? Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing. Dude, Animal Crossing is awesome. Yeah, me and my girlfriend, same thing, but, like... I think I have like 300 hours in Animal Crossing. We got like the crazy island. Yeah, so I yeah, just so. bought it. I just want to let her play it. Cause she, she plays games like that on her phone. Oh yeah. So I'll be like, you just that's take the a, switch yeah. and just and go to town. A perfect game for that, perfect yeah. Game. It's um, there's like this whole market thing where you like, it's called Nookazon and it's like, Amazon for Animal Crossing trading. <laughs> uh, dude, me and, me and Evelyn got super into that for at one point and we're like, Okay, we're gonna like get all the items we want on there, get all the villagers we want, because there's like trading or whatever on there. Uh, so you can like offer something and then they'll give you whatever. Uh, and there's also like, there's like a lot of bots on there. Uh-huh. So they'll bot like and mod like two million coins or whatever. And then, because like the money in that game is pretty hard to come by, you gotta like really like farm for it or like whatever, sell stuff. Uh, so they'll have like their island you go visit their island and there's like hundreds of money bags <laughs> and you just like take as much as you can uh so we like we definitely stocked up on that and just went crazy like designing our places <laughs> it was awesome and how like how in detail can you get in that game um it's you can get pretty detailed for sure like um there there's definitely some limitations especially with like um like for example the dlc she has it and i don't so she can like 
no matter what villager she has, she can like custom the house. But like I can't do that um, because I don't have that DLC. Because the DLC was like um, Happy Home Designer themed, which was like the Animal Crossing that came on the DS that was like literally just about designing a house. So they kind of incorporated that with the new one. And yeah, so she has it. So she's like can customize it a lot more than I can. Uh, and then as far as like the standard version of the game, you can you can really you can do a lot for sure. Especially if you get all the what what takes time is getting all like the little crafting cards or whatever to learn how to do it. So once you learn all like the recipes or whatever, like then you can go crazy. It takes a while though, for sure. So you really gotta grind that game. Yeah, you gotta grind it for sure. If you want it to be like to that extent, you gotta grind it. But but I think it's a fun grind. It's a chill grind, and it's nice to like kill time on. Honestly, I love I love me a chill grind. Yeah, it's not it's not nothing crazy. It's you plan your days. Um, the other thing that always that limits you is like. Um, the game goes by real days so like you have to like if you want to keep progressing ahead you have to like time travel which is like there's like in the animal crossing like community whatever it's like okay you time travel or like you don't time travel (laughs) there's like those kind of people uh and they'll be like and they'll be um you change the date and time on your switch (laughs) so you go into the settings and like change it and then restart the game load the game up again and if you put it like I don't know, like, yeah, like April, right? You'll get the cherry blossoms in the game because it's like cherry blossom season in Japan. So, uh, yeah, you you can like trick it like that, I guess. And is that like frowned upon? Some people, that's a yeah. So it's like some people are like, no, it's cool, and then some people are like, it's not Sorry, you legit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, you never, cool, but you never, seen back, but you never see Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah. True. So. Am I really? <laughs> no. um, yeah, I don't know. I, I and it was funny because my girlfriend got Animal Crossing before I did. She had a Switch before I did, and um, I would always like joke with her like, "Oh, you're like, it's not real. You're a time traveler, whatever." And and then I got it and I started doing it. She she gave me so much shit for it. You know what? I'm sure. I'm sure <laughs> if you really get, if you get to the point that a time traveler does, for example, like uh, I don't, I don't know, maybe. Uh, if you're just doing the normal grind, the yeah. day to day, I feel like it feels so fulfilling yeah. at the end of it. Yeah, you know it definitely, I mean? it definitely will. Well, you're, trying, it, you're trying to use your cherry blossoms, brother. Yeah, it it is it is totally a grind. It, but yeah, that's it's probably like two or three times the amount of like time I uh, Balloons Tower Defense. I would change the date. They totally oh, yeah. they patched it though. But I had like two billion cash at one point. Where I just buy whatever I wanted. But I just kept uh, changing yeah. the date. But what did suck is that like every day you're supposed to go open a chest, yeah. And then I couldn't get that anymore, and it was just like, damn, the chest is always open. <laughs> like those daily gifts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. That's where you're getting all the money from. But I just I couldn't get it anymore. And with Animal Crossing being a chill grind, are you a chill player or do you rage? I don't think no, you can rage in that game. No, I mean I'm not saying. Oh, in general. I'm not saying Animal Crossing, just in no, general. No, no, I'm not a rager at all. I'm very like, very chill. So uh, what town hall level are you? What's that? What town hall are you in Clash of Clans? Oh, I never played Clash. Oh my! I, I, I missed that whole. Wow. The whole thing, yeah. All all my friends tried to get me into it, and I remember like downloading it, and I think like I did like the first couple things in the game, and then like I was like just, and not that I didn't like it, I kind of just forgot about it, and that tends to happen with like every mobile game I try. I like try and be like, oh, this is cool, and then like I just forget about it, <laughs> and just like playing other shit or whatever. I just remember, like in high school. I'd be like in the back of the class, and then all you hear is my phone full blast, <laughs> and I just be like, "Fuck, man!" Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> I always forget, and I'd always get in trouble. Like there'd be like a movie on or something. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, damn it, dude. That's so funny. Yeah. Those were the days, though. Yeah, legendary days, legendary days for sure. What about man. like Clash Royale? No, I never played that either. Yeah, I went, I went stupid crazy hard on that one. And you know, I was thinking about it earlier going back to the Overcooked, right? That all stems from, I used to be a real gamer, real big gamer on my laptop when I was a kid, and going on like uh, the specific site, Play Hub, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was called. I was on the hub long, long ago. Play Hub, that's the hub. Or both. But I would always play these games where, similar to Overcooked, you'd get these orders. It would be for either like hot dogs in New York, 
or I'd be making pizzas in Italy. Or like the car- the cartoon looking ones. Yeah. yeah I know what you're talking about. Oh, and that's, yeah. I think that's where that stemmed from. You know? Yeah, yeah cool, probably cool did. Math games was yeah. the spot. Classic. Cool math games. And cool you played that, that cube one. Oh, that Block game was awesome. yeah, Dude, I used, to, I used to play all that stuff too, like in, in school and like uh, a lot of old school RuneScape. And then the one I played more than anything was Maple Story. Do you guys know about that? No. Maple Story is like an old 2D MMO, and it's like got like little anime graphics or whatever. Um, but yeah, it came out like around the same time RuneScape did, and everyone would be playing like RuneScape, and I was like, something about Maple Story kept me in, and I, I still play it to this day. <laughs> um, it's super grand. It's probably the most grinding game I've ever played for sure I remember in high school someone figured out a way to get Halo 2 on the on the library computers yeah, so. and we'd be playing with the little red uh, <laughs> little red mouse oh, like, yeah. it was, that, that's a grind that's, but it would be local play, so it'd be like ten of us playing against each other. It was so fun. Yeah. Dude, I got to figure out how to do that in my uh, in my detailing class at school. <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> those uh, those PC setups they have, they've got them set up to handle whatever, man. Dude, that's awesome. They're extremely. I, yeah, I can only imagine now, like crazy after school hours, just gr- grind out some hell divers, get it out of your system. <laughs> that would be great, actually. That would be great, but it's like they can they can. Uh, they can click on anybody's screen to see what they're looking at. Oh, yeah, yeah, so true. So I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't know, it's just crazy, like, how, like, all that stuff now is, like, because, like, when I worked at the eSports Center, I could do the same thing, like, and obviously it was for, like, security reasons, like, if they're downloading some kind of, like, malware or whatever, um, we could see that, and, like, but I could see everyone's computer, right? And, um, but, like, just the fact of, like, what has come to, like, where you can have one remote station and like see everything is like crazy because like back then it was like everyone had their own laptop or whatever and like that was it so can um would there be like a notification that would pop up on your end if someone was doing something bad uh, or you would just have to really be looking out for it yeah you you would have to like be purposely looking for it yeah or even know what you're looking for yeah but i'm assuming know, like, most people in that in that scenario know what to look for in do that you know sense, any right? like yeah. do you know any coding or anything like basic code um i know html a bit and um like a tiny bit of like Python, but nothing like crazy. But yeah, when I always was like, oh, after your skating or like even during skating, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go to college. I'm gonna do like computer science. I just never did it. But that's what I wanted to do was like coding, um, you know, and whatever. I, I didn't really care like what specific field of coding. I just wanted to do like some sort of coding. But yeah, I never, I was like, I'm good. And what about like, uh, you said you were doing a lot of producing at the time. How did that all, how'd that all come to fruition? Yeah, so, the, yeah, that's a whole nother world. Uh, so, I have always been a fan of like, um, I guess like the East Coast hip hop sound, but like for the beats. Um, like I said, I'm not really crazy about the rapping, um, but like the beats specifically and like the, um, I don't know, like just like that and like the lo-fi, all that stuff. Um, all that stuff I kind of really just found on my own. Um, I was definitely like, like going back to like MySpace days, like on MySpace, I was like crazy about like all the MySpace, like deathcore, the grindcore, the crazy weird like cyber grind stuff, um, like all that stuff and like noise, noise projects, all that really interested me. So I just like, like really just dial in on like the genre. So I did that with like beats and stuff and uh, same kind of thing. Like I liked the weirder or like sounding stuff, I guess. And then that took me to like the East Coast hip hop, like dusty style beats is what people call them. Um, and that I was like, okay, cool. Like I kind of want to get into this. So I just started as every producer does on Fruit Loops <laughs> uh, on FL Studio. Um, of course, of course, they uh, a cracked version. <laughs> uh, and I only say this because it's like the big meme of like um, when you start producing or whatever. It's always a Fruit Loop cracked version, and that's like what starts it. It's like a real thing. It's funny. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Just kind of like dove into it. Just, just a lot of YouTube and stuff. Um, and yeah, I don't know, just like going through forms and forms of forms of like sample packs, sounds and stuff, and then just like making whatever, uh, sampling a bunch of old songs. Uh, that's really a grind. 
Yeah, yeah, it's. I definitely put a lot into that too. Um, here's some crazy lore that only a few people know, but I mean, I guess to put it out there. Do you guys know Brockhampton? Uh, I grew up making music with them. <laughs> so I, I grew up making music with them. I was in. Oh, you're a big fan. Yeah, I grew up with Kevin Abstract specifically. Uh, we grew up in the same town. So I was introduced to him, uh, I think I was like 13 or 14 when I met him. Um, and at the time, uh, Odd Future was like really blowing up. Uh, so um, we all had like mutual friends, whatever. And I was like, I had kind of just started making music at the time, producing at least. And he was like, oh, like, we're doing this like collective, like you should be a part of it kind of thing. And that collective was called A Life Since Forever. Um, and that is the whole group that is now Brockhampton. So like all the, the, the boy band members were all in that group as well. Um, so like we, he wanted it to be like Odd Future and he knew how good I was at skating and Odd Future at the time had a lot of like incorporated skating into their stuff. So he was like, oh, that's like perfect. We can like bring you in and like do like skate content or whatever. Uh, and then, you know, make beats, whatever, uh, like all that kind of stuff. So I got to like hanging out with them all the time. Um, and a lot of the guys were from like all over the world. So everyone met on the form Kanye to the, which is just like a form about producing and music and stuff like that. Um, it wasn't super Kanye focus, even though it says <laughs> says in the name. Um, but yeah, so that's how the whole Brockhampton group met. It was like through that form. And then we started like, I guess kind of putting out the A Life Since Forever collective stuff. It kind of started getting traction. Um, and then we did South by Southwest. Uh, are you guys familiar with that? South by Southwest. It's every spring break in Austin, Texas. And it's like the biggest, one of the biggest like music festivals. And it's like a week long. Um, but it's like not, it's not a traditional music festival. It's like Austin is a very music heavy city. So every single venue, and there's like seriously probably like 50 venues or something. Um, they're all doing like their, showcases their um all day free events with like artists and that's like a really really good way to get known in like music and you know texas whatever and of course every kind of genre they had there um so yeah we did that and that was the first time we all met um in person we all hung out together um yeah and then from there just kept going and i slowly like faded out of that um, just for like skating and just like doing other stuff, whatever. Um, so by the time it became Brockhampton, I was like no longer part of it. Um, but that's always very cool to look back on. And like some of my first shows, um, there's another project that I had, which was, um, it's called Data Fix. And I've been doing that for like over 10 years. And that is music made with Game Boys. <laughs> it, it used like an actual Game Boy and there's a modded cartridge that goes inside and it brings up like a sequencer and a tracker. Yeah. So like, I go in there and make instruments and do all that. That's actually, that's the secret lore to the Game Boy tattoo. Uh, so I was doing all these like shows with a live sense forever. Like I would open as like data fix and like the Game Boy project. And then they would play after and I'd be on stage with them after. Um, so it like really became this whole thing of like, okay, Datafix is playing and then ASF is playing. That's what the short name was, ASF. Um, so yeah, and then we, like I said, we just grinded all the way until South by Southwest. They kept doing South by Southwest every year. Um, they ended up getting all these big shows and well, now they're like one of the biggest things ever, which is crazy. Um, but, but not a thing anymore. Not a thing anymore, no. The the boy band is no longer. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Because, uh, yeah, they really did, like, a bunch of great stuff. Um, and, like, most of the stuff I did was obviously really early. Um, like, my... I don't even think the the EP I did with Kevin Abstract, the, I did, like, an intro track with him on it. I don't even think it's, like, on streaming, like, anywhere. I think it's, like, everything's been, like, taken down. Not even on SoundCloud or nothing like that? No, I don't think so, because I've tried to look for it before. And the only way I've found it, that kind of stuff, is... Have you heard of, like, the Internet Archive thing? Mm -hmm. It's, like, this website that keeps old logs of, like, as far as the Internet has existed. Like, f 
just topics or whatever stuff like that you can like search on there and it'll come up with like um sir it, it doesn't have everything but it'll come up with like like i did that and i saw the old like our old band camp and it was like a live sense forever project and then it was like the kevin abstract band camp that had like me um on the intro track um because I like produce it, and I did that one with like my Game Boy. So he had like this eight bit intro. So it, that was really cool. Um, and then just yeah, I helped him with some of the the, the super old stuff. Um, played tons of shows with them, and yeah, now they they blew up. <laughs> but yeah, that was like all the stuff I did with like producing. And then I from from after that I started doing like lo-fi producing, like lo-fi beats and stuff. And that was like right before lo-fi beats like really took off and like the whole like beats to study thing became a thing um like when i started doing that that started blowing up and i was like oh wow there's like a whole whole scene for this it's just crazy um yeah so that was like all the all you're still the making beats to this day no i haven't in a while honestly it's been a while um that and the game boy project i've kind of like Every time I show someone my Game Boy project, they're always like, dude, you should keep doing shows. You should keep doing this. Because, like, I, I played a lot of cool stuff. Like, I got to play South by Southwest myself with my Game Boy project. Um, and, like, playing South by Southwest in Texas, like, if you're from Texas, it's kind of, like, a big deal thing. Um, so I got on a on a showcase that was, like, um, like, catered to, like, making music with, like, video game hardware or, like, uh, noise projects where, like, the, like, circuit bin, like, a like a kid's, like, piano toy and then, like, mod it all crazy so it sounds cool. Uh, so I got to play a showcase like that, which is really awesome. Um, are you guys familiar with Anamana Gucci? So they are the people that made, like, the Scott Pilgrim soundtrack. Uh, so they're, like, super big. Um, and the drummer had a had a project called Knife City and I got to like play with him and that Game Boy stuff so that was really cool um but yeah it was like those two worlds were like what I was doing when I didn't have like my guitar or whatever so um yeah there was like I didn't play so Provoke was my first band with people the first time I ever like played with people because everything I was doing was like solo and like I did obviously collaborative stuff with like the Brockhampton Life Sense Forever stuff I did collaborative stuff with them obviously but it wasn't like it was more like what they wanted to do you know like that kind of thing and then like I would help out where I could or whatever um but like Provoke was like the first time I like really like played an instrument with people and like that kind of thing and like felt like a collaborative effort yeah like we're all on the same page doing the same did it feel weird at all or did it feel kind of natural in a way a little bit of both for me personally because um for me i was like so used to like the way i wrote music and like it was different than the way everyone else did uh so like when we would write some new stuff um like that was different for me and then like when we would uh like when we went to the studio for the first time i was very used to like a metronome and like so, uh, like so, yeah. uh, like some people had some trouble a little bit <laughs> um and not like awfully but you could tell like um it took a little bit just to get used to and a metronome is just to like keep pace right yeah it keeps you in tempo so it's just like the the it just keeps yeah clicking in tempo um but i've always worked with the tempo um since you know making all the beats or whatever like the first thing i do is like set the tempo um and and turn on the metronome so like i was always used to that um and that was like when I noticed like oh this like solo stuff is like helping me here is like uh. with like the studio experience and like doing all that stuff like being familiar with like the DAW interface and like all that kind of stuff um that's like where I was like okay the solo stuff is like helping me out and like I have some experience and then when we played our first show um which by the way like, <laughs> was very awful for me um do you guys know the story about the first Provoke show? No. Was that, so, a, was that a baseline? It was a baseline, yeah. Um, shout out to Jeff. He booked us. He was the first person to book us. We didn't have any music out. We didn't have anything. He was just like, this band's making music. All right, we'll put you on. So, very dope of him. Um, so, we get to baseline, 
and at the time I was going through like a lot of like health problems. So right before we play, I'm like like coughing up blood, and it's like miserable. And then baseline as well is like super hot. Obviously, like everyone knows that that whole story. Uh, so I'm like, dude, I don't know if I can play. I'm like coughing up blood, and um, so I get back and because like. Um, there's no restroom in baseline, so we went down the street to, uh, to like whatever market was there to go use the restroom with me and my girlfriend. And uh, when I went in the restroom, I like felt it coming up, so I like started coughing, and I was like, "Holy shit, there's like blood!" Right? So I like, freak out and like tell her, and she was like, "You look really pale," and like something's going on. And she said I was like, it seemed like my brain was like very foggy and like not really there. And when uh, when I when she told me, I was like, "Fuck, I should I should call them and tell them like, dude, I don't know if I can play." So I did that, and then when I got back to like meet with all you know the rest of the band, um, they were like, "Dude, what are we gonna do? Whatever." And I was like, "You know what? Like, I can't. We can't just drop last minute. Like, we're already here. Whatever. Like, we're literally here. Why? You know?" So I was like, "All right, let's go sound check and let's see if I can like hang or whatever." Um, we sound checked, and then we just we just started. <laughs> we just started playing. Um, and then after that, Andrew was like, dude, you looked, like, super pale. Like, uh, something was happening, for sure. Um, so, yeah, that was that was something. Um, but, yeah, when, when we... Uh, the first show was, like... The first time, like I said, I ever played live with anyone. All the Game Boy stuff I did was by myself. And the way I did that was, like, a DJ mixer and, like, one Game Boy on the left, one Game Boy on the right. So I was, like, as if I was a DJ, right? But the... The program had like live triggers so i could like set like live like okay i only want like the lead to play here but i want the bass to play on this side so, and like mix it in and like kind of go back and forth and do stuff like that um so yeah provoke was like my real first collaborative experience my real first performing with people like oh, everything <laughs> um yeah and it was like after that first show i was like okay there's like there's there's a lot from the solo stuff I was doing that helped me out to play the live show because I didn't really feel nervous as much as I thought I would. I didn't really feel like pressured and you know that kind of stuff. I've just felt like I was playing. And I think that goes back to like the solo stuff and performing a lot in back in Texas. So how often do yeah. you think you practice like on a weekly basis? Now? Uh-huh. Um not not crazy like I don't practice a whole lot at home now um, because now especially now that I'm going to provoke and ruin um, we usually try to do practice like once a week so I usually like okay that's the time to practice now um, and I've, I've just been honestly trying to be better too about like um, life balance stuff uh-huh. so like hanging out with my girlfriend and then like not just doing my own thing and when she's around you know what I mean so trying to put more effort into like balancing that out so like I, I don't play a whole lot um at home as much as I used to for sure oh. like and if she's like not there or whatever then I'll like write some riffs or like whatever um do like that kind of stuff um like I have a million unfinished projects on my reaper program of just like solo stuff with like riffs and drums and whatever um just like ideas for like provoke um so that's kind of the most I do at home, yeah. Just most of the practice I do now is like at the studio, where like the, the space we practice at. So yeah, maybe like, like once a week. Like being as locked in as you are in like multiple different things, how do you, how do you make time for everything else? <laughs> what do you do to kind of like keep things together? Um, I don't, is this like as far as music or like the whole grand scheme of like? Everything. Because uh, obviously, you know, when, when you're when you're as locked in as you are, you got to dedicate tons of hours to these things, right? Yeah. And yeah. It, those hours that you're dedicating to those takes away from other things. And it's like, yeah. how do you, you know, what, is there anything that you do specifically to kind of keep it all together? Keep everything? Um, I guess the only thing I do is, like, I do it in, like, phrases, I guess you can say. Like, like a few days I'll be like okay I'm gonna like write all this music or whatever and then the next few days I'll be like 
um, I haven't skated in a while, but like I just skated last week and I was like, okay, well maybe I'll start skating every once in a while. And most of the time I do all the stuff is when uh, my girlfriend's like working and I'm just like, well, I'm by myself. I might as well do something like that, right? So um, yeah, when she's working, I'll like, okay, today I'm gonna like write music or like today I'm gonna, um, you know, design stuff. Cause I also do like a lot of graphic design. Um, so like I'll work on like random stuff just like for practice or like, like what? stuff like coming down like later for like provoke or stuff like um, when I do a lot of practice stuff I do a lot of like um, just like banners or like flyers just to like practice and I'll just put whatever on there like I'll just pick a theme and like stick to it and just like see what I can make with it because um, designing is like another thing I've been doing for like six years or something um, same thing just shit ton of YouTube <laughs> teaching me. Jack of all trades, man. <laughs> Damn. The wizard. Uh, the wizard. <laughs> the wizard. Uh, yeah, it's like, um, everything's Provoke has put out. Like, I've designed um, all the Ruin stuff. I think, actually, not the shirts. I only did the Halo shirt. When's that, when's that coming out? Uh, we just put an order in, actually. So. I, don't, I don't pre-order that, like, day <laughs> Dude, one. I know. <laughs> I know. We've been, like, so bad about, like, and, and like, it, okay, it is our fault too, but like the the guy we're working with, uh, Josh, he's the drummer of like Momentum and stuff. He's been out in like Asia for like I know, whatever. I had Sergio um, about it like a, yeah. a few weeks ago and he told me. He's the guy who does our merch, so. Um, but now he's back, so like, yeah, we finally got an order put in, so that's good, <laughs> finally. <laughs> um, so yeah, just like flyers and stuff. Um, for a while, I was doing like freelance design stuff, so like. Well, that was catered to like the gaming world, so like esports headers and like uh, Twitch stream overlays, stuff like that. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, like all that kind of stuff I was doing. Um, and like all of that really just stemmed for me, like when I first started streaming. I was like, dude, all these like generic overlays suck. <laughs> I just want to like make my own. Uh, and then that led to like, okay, this is really fun. I want to do everything. <laughs> funny because I have like the most generic overlay it's literally just like a red border that's it that's all I got I mean, it works I, I just started I'm just extra honestly gotta get that noodles <laughs> wizard though. treatment for real yeah. gotta get that noodles wizard treatment mm -hmm. spice your out. life up a bit yeah. you know so you designed that Yu-Gi-Oh provoke sticker <coughs> I did that Hard. thing is badass Hard. I did yeah I took the rip and I was like you play a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh um not anymore I did I definitely did for sure a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! I played a lot of Master Duel, um, a lot of Duel Links. I got to the highest rank in Master Duel <laughs> when it first came out. Super nerdy. <laughs> um, yeah, and I was like, especially like the Dark Magician logo or like the character is like such a nostalgic, iconic thing that I think everyone will kind of like gravitate to. And same thing for Halo. So we did Halo as well for Ruin. Um, but yeah, it was just like an idea I had. I was like, I want to do a fun, a fun one, like a fun rip or whatever. But so seems, I did that one. But it seems like the Halo one. It, it it seems like that one's a little closer to your heart. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Yeah. Um, that because like, dude, like that I've been playing that game since like middle school. So like for sure, definitely Halo is like, um, I guess the one I have the Ruin ones like more attachment to. But the Yu-Gi-Oh is like definitely close, close second for sure. Yeah, because my homie, he's like very entry level hardcore. Yeah. And I posted that sticker on my story, and then he liked it. And I forgot that he hosts like Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments at his oh, house and okay. shit. Because yeah. he's like hardcore into it. Yeah. And um, next show, I was like, yeah, I gotta get him some. <laughs> I got, I got him a group of those stickers. Dude, he awesome. loves it. Yeah, and I and I did them like like I said, I just wanted it to be like a fun rip. And I didn't tell the band I ordered it until it was like, I had already ordered it. I was like, hey, by the way, I got this. Um, Best decision you could have ever Yeah, seen. yeah, for real. Was Everyone was stoked on them, so I was like, I'm glad I did it. And I was like, um, yeah, I, did, I paid for it all out of pocket and not like through the band funds and stuff. And then, yeah, I'm really glad I did. Everyone likes it. And people have been like, dude, you should put it on a shirt. So maybe we'll do a shirt at some point. Maybe, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I've, I've done all the... Both bands, all the stuff except uh, all the stuff that Ruin has from RSR, I had nothing to do with. So, like, that was, and that was also, yeah, all of it was before I joined. So, um, that and then the the Oni No Thoughts shirt, um, that they got that commission before I joined. So, 
when that show came out, it was like right when I joined Ruin. So since then, I've done everything. So you've only played an instrument for like a year and a half, but how long have you been into like hardcore, like the scene at least? Um, the scene probably since I moved here with Evelyn. So when I was back in Texas, <clears throat> I went. Most of the shows I went to in Texas were like deathcore stuff and metalcore. Because those were like the first two I like really, really like got into. Uh, deathcore and metalcore. And then I was like, um, my dad like grew up taking me to shows since I was like probably like 10 or something. Maybe even younger. Maybe like 9 or something. My dad took me to every single show he went to and that was like what really set me like in the path, which is awesome. Um, he took me to like... Like, every, like, old new metal band I, like, I've probably seen. <laughs> He's, like, super into that. Um, which is very cool, because that, that path sent me into, like, um, first, like, the deathcore and metalcore stuff. And then I got introduced to, like, Haybreed, and I was like, dude, this is just breakdowns the whole time. This is awesome. So your dad so, planted the seed. He did, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, my mom didn't really, like... Like, she, like, liked it. She would listen to it, but, like, if I was in my mom's car, it was, like... Which was this probably where the other side comes from. It was like hip hop stuff or like whatever, which is probably where that comes from. Uh, she liked a lot of like the oldie stuff and she like gravitated to all that stuff. And then I was like, I'd always like hang out with my dad. So when I got in his car or whatever, just hanging out at the house, it was always, my dad's like a big collector. So he had like binders and binders of like old, like, you know, all the old classic stuff like corn, Slipknot, obviously like Seven Dust. Um, yeah, just all the old new metal stuff. And, like, I would just, like, pull a CD and play it. And, like, yeah, that set me on the path. Um, and then I got into, um, what was after that? I got into, like, metalcore, deathcore. And then got into hardcore um, from exposure to, like, hate breed because I saw them a few times at, like, festivals my dad took me to. At the time was like that was when like Hatebreed hey was like really blown up, so they were playing like every fest, um, and I was like, this is this is dope. Like I really want to like hear more of this, so I got into it around that time of like when all that was happening, probably like 2010 something like that. Um, but then I didn't. I wasn't really like in the hardcore scene like in my hometown at all. Um, I was mostly into like again like the deathcore kind of scene, deathcore metalcore, um, the weird like again like the weird noise project stuff. Like I like all that stuff a lot. Um, and then from there, I didn't really get into the scene again until I moved out here, which was r- right at the start of COVID. Like I'm, I moved here as everything was like shutting down. So like I was like oh cool I'm in California and then everything was like. <laughs> So, like, my first experiences in California was, like, sitting at home. Oh. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, and then my, my girlfriend, she's uh, always been into, like, heavy stuff, too. So, um, she's always liked going to shows or whatever. So, we went to a uh, program. And after that program show, I was like, okay, this is dope. Uh, because we went to the program show not knowing a single band. We were like, okay, let's dig into the local scene, hardcore scene. Um, it was like a straight edge night at program. Awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, and, I, and I'm not straight edge or anything, um, but like seeing what it was and experiencing like, you can tell like the community was all together. You could tell like everyone was passionate. I was like, this is dope. So yeah, we, we just went to a, for us at the time was a random show. Um, we didn't know any of the bands. We just showed up at program. We knew about program, so we just showed up. Uh, and that night, we saw Major Pain. Uh, we saw Godhead. Back to Godhead. We saw... Um, what else played that? There was, like, two other bands. I'm, like, totally blanking on the other bands. But, yeah, that, after that, I was like, okay, we want to be a part of this. And then we kept going to shows and shows and shows, so... So now it's been like probably two years. Um, Yeah, and then the entire two years, well, I guess a year, we went like to shows consistently for like a year. And we, me and her are like very like, we do our own thing together kind of thing. We don't really like go out and like talk to people. We don't like, we both just don't like bugging people, you know what I mean? So um, 
we went like a year straight going to all these shows seeing the same people over and over but we never talked to any of them until I joined Provoke <laughs> and then when I joined Provoke I was like um so there's like a whole story when I joined Provoke um I didn't know any of them uh Okay, so I'll dive into that and then I'll come back to this. So I, um, my friend Manny, who plays in Dali now, um, he plays bass in that band. He was jamming with me, my friend Andy and my friend Alex that I mentioned earlier. And we were trying to do this little project and it just like faded out. Um, he had recommended, well, I, we had followed each other on Instagram and that was like me, same people those are like the only people I followed within like the hardcore scene right um and so we um well not we I I at the time was like okay this project's fading out I want to play in a band I'm going to post on my story um hey is anyone looking for bassist that kind of thing like I'm trying to join a band and the exact same day, like it was meant to happen, the exact same day, Joe and Provoke posted, I'm looking for a bass player, does anyone know? And then Manny knew Joe, so he like connected us. And so it was just like the exact same day, it's like this like meant to be story, it feels like. Um, the exact same day, um, yeah. And then he messaged me, was like, hey, we're doing this project. Um, and at the time I had a, a, well, I think it's still on there. I have a Dying Wish cover on my Instagram. And he saw that and he was like, dude, that's just awesome, whatever. Like, you should come jam with us. And like, that's what like started Provoke. <laughs> it was like the same day. It was just like, every time I think about that story, I'm like, there's no way. Like, I wasn't supposed to be in this band. <laughs> it's really cool. That's when you met your long lost brother. Yeah, that's, yes, that's, what, that's exactly it. Which is so funny. Everyone, every, dude, all the tour shows we did, if you ever like, is this your brother? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's how Provoke started, that's how I, um, joined, and then that's when we started, like, actually talking to everyone in the hardcore community, um, cause then it was like, okay, we're going around with Provoke to whatever show, we're playing a show, and all the same people we've been seeing are, like, talking to them now, and then that's when we started, like, really getting involved with, like, knowing people in the community, and, like, I guess, like, uh, you know, befriending them. Yeah. Um, instead of just like seeing them at every show and not talking to them, you know what I mean? So, uh, so yeah, it was really cool. And it, was, it felt like a really genuine way to come into the hardcore scene, too. Just like going to that first show and not knowing anything. And especially from Texas, like that was, that wasn't my first California show, but it was my first local California show, like all locals. And that was, that was like what set it off. I was like, dude, this is dope. So yeah, and then we just kept going, and a few more times we'd go to shows, like, we didn't know anyone, we'd just go and show up. It was, it was awesome. So now that you're, f like, fully embedded into the hardcore scene, specifically the California one, yeah. um, what, to you, what is hardcore? To me, hardcore is, like, it's, like, you know, it's, like, it's community. It's, like, the whole, like, brotherhood, brotherhood term. Like that kind of stuff. Like hardcore is like, how can I put it? Like, like for example, like the whole straight edge thing is like you know being about yourself, being a you know a good person, that kind of thing. And if you're not a good person, like hardcore community holds you accountable for that. Like that's really dope. I like that. Um, so yeah, just like a sense of community, a sense of like supporting each other, um, not being like. A shitty person <laughs> uh, within that community. To me, that's like hardcore, and everyone like kind of has like their own like take on hardcore. Uh, but yeah, to me, that it's really just like community and like okay, we're all doing this extreme stuff together, kind of thing. And that's like the cool thing about hardcore is like it's not limited. Like there's a bunch of like hardcore bands that sound like like an indie band or something, or like so like you get like that's like the perspective I see it in like all these um doesn't matter what kind of genre you play it's like a community it's all mixed it's all same reason kind of thing um and everyone also has like their personal reasons on why they're into it or like whatever too which is also dope so like that's yeah that's hardcore to me like community brotherhood <laughs> that kind of stuff what are what are some of your favorite like 
hardcore band that, like right now right now yeah um first one favorite band of all time Vane I guess we'll do like another 10 minutes or so try to wrap it up I guess yeah yeah fuck damn, <laughs> yeah. damn. so anyways <laughs> <laughs> hey we're oh, back man. we're back um favorite hardcore bands oh, yeah. right now <laughs> right now um, I think number one for me will always be Vane. Vane FM. Love them. Vane on top. Vane on top. Yeah, dude, I don't know. I like everything about it. Like, it's got, like, the hardcore mosh parts. It's got, like, the metalcore stuff. It's got the crazy whammy stuff. <laughs> and then when you see them live, it's, like, crazy. Um, and then another one. Sanction. Another oh, one. Fuck. Yeah. But easily one of my favorites. Um... How many should I do? Should I do five? We'll do five. five. Okay. Wait, is this going in order from one to five? Or that could be. That could be. Yeah. So yes, vein number one. Okay. Sanction number two. Okay. Um. It's gonna make it a lot harder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is. Really yeah. Now, now I got. Now I got to actually think. For sure, veins at number one. We can yeah. reorder. <laughs> um. Another one for me is definitely. Damn, now it is harder. Um, <laughs> Harm's Way. I like Harm's Way a lot. Harm's Way is, is is an awesome band because, well, for a lot of reasons, but like the tones are great. I love the tones. It's like HM2 without being HM2, even though they did HM2 before, like the pedals they use. Um, and then like, it's not always mosh parts, but it's like, they feel like well-written songs, which is really dope. I like that. Um. So harm's way three. Yeah. No. Two. Damn. <laughs> this is tough. Okay, I'll put harm's way three. I'll put the, yeah, harm's way three. Um. Some of the newer stuff, Balmora. Probably like. Probably number four. I I put number four there. Elden Mosh. Elden Mosh. <laughs> yeah, dude. Can't uh can't beat it. Um. And then I'll go like. I'll go older, traditional stuff. Like, I mean, it's gotta be Haybreed. Haybreed has to be on there, because that's like the one that I heard that was like, set me on the... Okay, what about like an honorable mention? An honorable mention for hardcore, let's see. Dude, there's so many, it's so hard to like, think of, there's so many good bands. <laughs> um, You're the Knife, for sure. You're the Knife, yeah. Definitely. Um, and then obviously their whole story is like awesome. Stoked that they're back. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Year of the Knife is definitely a big one for me too, yeah. Um, yeah, I would, I, would, I would say that. That's awesome. Um, I was not expecting Vane. I really wasn't. I am... I, I played Vane so much in my car that I think my girlfriend got tired of it. <laughs> like I was playing it like every day. So do you think awesome. you're like the number one global listener of, on Last FM? <laughs> I was definitely like up there for sure, um, dude. I, I would be curious to see because I I don't have less stuff in, but in the Spotify I was in like the top five percent or whatever, awesome. top zero five. Or it was like, yeah, I was stupid. I remember one year I had that for Ramirez, like zero zero one something like that, like <laughs> way up there. Yeah, for Ramirez. That's that elite status, backstage pass <laughs> status. I yeah. wish. I remember I remember I got kicked out of a show. <laughs> And I was so fucking upset. I didn't, I didn't even get to see him fucking play. Dang. No way. Some bullshit. Were you, like, moshing or something? No. Or, like... There was, like, a pit going on, and then there, this guy was with his girl, and she got hit. And then the, the friend I was with at the time, he was like, bro, like, she's in the pit. What do you want? What, what do you want? And he tried to fight him, so we all just, like, uh, jumped this guy, me and my friend, and then they threw us out. Yeah. You know? Big L. Big, well, big L. I mean... It's not a hardcore show, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's not a hardcore show. Yeah, but when you call for a pit, that's what happens. It was actually Puya. Puya called for a pit. Oh, yeah. Puya called out for a pit, and that's what happened. And she was just standing there. You're going to get hit. <laughs> and that's, like, the one thing I don't like about hardcore, especially, like, when you're, like, on the edge of a pit and you get hit and you throw, like, a bitch fit, get the fuck out. I <laughs> yeah. hate that. That's yeah. the worst thing. You got to, like... You gotta know what you're getting into. Like, totally. you gotta, and and uh, like people say this all the time. Like, like, oh, hardcore shows are scary or whatever. But it's like you don't you don't have to be up in there like that. Like you can still enjoy it from the back or like enjoy it on the side wherever. Because like, 
like I've done my fair share of like I don't really mosh anymore but like I you know done my fair share of like the moshing or whatever but like at the same time like um most of my shows most of the shows I go with my girlfriend so it's like she doesn't want to get hit you know what I mean so like we can still enjoy and experience it all from like either like near the pit or like whatever and like at the same time we know what we're getting into so like if it gets pushed back or like whatever like okay, it's I not really a big deal enjoy watching people's mosh so I really like to get up in there yeah but I know what I'm getting myself into. Yeah, I, maybe exactly, even sometimes yeah. I like to get hit. Yeah. Um, it's a good wake-up call. Pay attention. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. That's you know your life. <laughs> yeah, straight up, yeah. I do remember one time I got hit, like, right in the neck. And I was like, <gasps> like, everything went out of me, like, real quick. And I was like, oh, that was, that was, that was kind of scary. That was scary. Dang. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess we'll wrap it up. Yeah? Yeah, before this thing definitely calls it quits. <laughs> yeah, all right, guys. This is Chris Noodles. You, anything you want to say? Any shows coming up? Any collabs you're going to do uh, anytime soon? Anything like that? Ruin is going on tour soon, so look out for that. That's very dope. Ruin's doing a run. Um, Provoke has a Long Beach show coming up in August that's not announced yet. Uh, we have two songs we're about to record and put out some new stuff for Provoke. Awesome. Um, and we're doing that we're doing a so I'll just put it out there we're gonna do a split with the band Evulsion which is like another one of our brother band kind of things great friends of ours um so yeah that those two songs are for that split and that should be coming out soon um yeah other than that that's it you wanna plug yourself yeah sure um my ad's crazy so (laughs) uh but yeah you can find me on Instagram at noodles n-u-d-e-l five z's <laughs> that's the only way i can get the name so uh, yeah that's my ad follow provoke follow ruin thanks for that thanks pleasure, for thanks for listening you. pleasure having you yeah thank you um other than that support your scene yeah support the scene support your scene yeah you guys love y'all peace, peace.